I'm learning something. Bill set, Gene. What? I'm going to call the uh, Sheboygan Common Council Committee of the Whole meeting of Monday, November 22nd, 21st, 2011 to order. Uh, please call the roll. Belt. Here. Foran. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Excuse. Excused. Uh, excused. Excused. Hammon. Here. Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Path. Here. Kittleson is here. Matichek. Present. Riesler. Here. Sampson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. Quorum is present. Thank you. Let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next we have on the agenda number four is approval of the minutes from the November 16, 2011 meeting. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the minutes from uh, November 16th. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Number five, we have a public <coughs> forum on the agenda item that we're going to discuss regarding the city budget. Uh, those wishing to speak will be limited to three minutes per person. Who would like to speak? So please step forward. Uh, Dulce, Dulce, could we have your uh, name Dulce and address? Dulce Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. You'll have three minutes. <clears throat> At the last Committee of the Whole meeting, um, you voted to recommend privatizing the garbage service and for a five-year contract. Um, I support privatizing the garbage service. <clears throat> I think the time is now because of the many retirements. You don't need to make any layoffs, and you avoid having to spend $1.6 million for new trucks. But I do not support making it uh, a fee service. It needs to be a part of the budget. Otherwise, you're not balancing the budget. You're just increasing everybody's taxes 100 to 120 dollars. I don't have any problem with the present service. I think they work very hard. They do a good job. <clears throat> but I'm a, familiar with privatized services and other communities. My son lives near Rockford, Illinois, and everybody there contracts for their own service. There are no problems. They do a very good job. I'm aware of a community in Florida where they have privatized garbage service. They collect garbage three times a week there. Twice they collect household garbage, once a week recycling, and once a week all uh, Yard waste. <clears throat> no problems. It, it, it's just fine. <clears throat> so I don't think that that should be an issue, although I don't have any problem with the, the current system. <clears throat> the other issue that I have with the budget consideration is I think you should stop kicking the can down the road on reorganizing the fire department. If you're going to do this reorganization through attrition, the time to start is now because there are four retirements in the department. <clears throat> I think closing the downtown station would be a big mistake. Um, <clears throat> it serves the oldest and largest, uh, densest part of the city. Chief Herman has a map where he draws circles takes the fire station and he draws a circle out. I don't know what the distance is. <clears throat> but if you drew that circle for the downtown station, you'd be covering a lot of, you know, the city. If you draw that circle for station number five, the same circle, well, that station is only two blocks or two houses from the town of Wilson Line. So, you know, that circle would cover 
a large part of the town of Wilson. And the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan do not provide fire service for the town of Wilson. <clears throat> Somebody figured based on the 2008 information of 99 structure fires in the year, which averages out to less than two fires per month per station, that the chance of your house having a fire is once in 111 years. We can no longer afford to staff for the worst case scenario, and I hope that you will begin the reorganization of the fire department starting in 2012. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Anybody else wish to speak? Yes, sir. For the record, uh, Mr. Longmiller, your name and address? 2611 Rolling Meadows Drive. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but when I hear uh, Ms. Johnson's statement of worst case scenario, I don't believe that Sheboygan is staffed for worst case scenario. If that was true, maybe we need 10 or 15 guys on our rig. We're staffed right now just to meet the minimums just to have a house fire. Is that worst case scenario, Ms. Johnson? Some people it is, but the worst case we could have, multiple fires. We have just enough people on scene to do one house fire. It doesn't matter if it's one in a, a thousand, one in a hundred thousand. It could happen at any minute right now. So I think that needs to be put into your thoughts. Uh, Mr. Versi, Alderman, Alderperson Versi, I uh, didn't want to comment, but I thought your comments in the newspaper were interesting as well. Low-hanging fruit. I thought the, the graph in the paper was very interesting. So, such that it's low hanging that we're, our firefighters per population per capita is one of the lowest. Uh, not to mention our per capita cost, one of the lowest. So I wouldn't say that the fire department has, has a lot of low, frank, low hanging fruit that people are hitting their heads on. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else wish to speak? And for the third time, anyone wish to speak? Uh, thank you for speaking during the public forum. Chairman's comments, uh, what I'm going to do in just a moment once we get into number seven is I'm going to have our Chief Administrative Officer, Jim Amorio, come up and give us a update on the budget uh, since the last Committee of the Whole meeting. And then you can, ans you can ask uh, Mr. Amorio any questions. And then right after that, I'm going to ask Vice President Hammond and Chairman of the Finance Committee to go over some possible scenarios to take care of our budget for 2012. And then we'll be able to ask uh, Vice President Hammond any questions on those possible scenarios. So next on the agenda, we have items for discussion and possible recommendation of the Common Council. Item number seven is discussion and possible action on the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 2012 budget. Yes, Mr. Amodio. Thank you. Uh, since last time we met, um, the shortfall we had uh, for the city in the 2012 budget was roughly $950,000. Since that point in time, we've added a few things. We know that uh, we probably have a primary and an election for the mayoral office, and we also probably have one uh, for our, the governor's position in the state. So we've added another $20,000 in an election, or $80,000 in total. In addition, we, all talked about, uh, we also talked about the uh, airport prep site where the uh, city might have to contribute up to $100,000 uh, for the dredging that will go on for the site prep at the airport. So we've also added that. The offsets that we know to date uh, to that, and that the total of the 950, the 80, and the 100 are $1,130,000. Police supervisors ratified uh, their contract, and that's a savings to the city of 70,000. Police patrol has not, uh, that was potentially a savings of 230,000. So uh, the next step in that process is mediation. Uh, 
public works director, as we spoke earlier, uh, we would not be replacing. That's a savings of 125,000 with benefits. Uh, we've also negotiated between uh, the Motor Vehicle Fund and the uh, uh, fire department where uh, the fire department had a, lay had a retirement for its mechanic and uh, we're gonna actually do the uh, mechanical work for repairs on the fire equipment at the motor vehicle pool. So we would not have to replace the mechanic in the fire department, saving another $80,000 uh, for fire. Also looking at the public works restructuring and sitting down with Dave and what his plans are. Uh, he's got uh, roughly five people on a supervisory staff that uh, are being shuffled around. Three of them have retired. Uh, or actually, uh, four of them have retired, and through consolidation, we're, we're able to save two and a half jobs. Uh, in addition, uh, we're going to save uh, a job in the Parks Department, uh, probably a secretary uh, that's uh, retiring out of uh, the um, Engineering Department, uh, and we come up with a total additional savings in Public Works, uh, in addition to not replacing the director of $270,000. So when you add up the fire mechanic, the police supervisors, the public works director, and the public works restructuring as we know it so far today, uh, that's an offset of $545,000 to the $1,130,000 deficit. That currently puts 2012 at a shortfall of $585,000. In addition, in 2011, as we've talked about looking at this uh, over a two year period, if not three. Uh, we currently have retirements to date of 37 people in the city. The impact on the general fund uh, for 2011 is $800,000 in retirement benefits that will be paid out uh, by the end of uh, this year on 12-31-11. As I have also stated in this year's budget, we have roughly $350,000 that's been reserved for that. So that leaves a shortfall in 2011 of uh, 450,000. So in looking at the 585 we're short in 12, the 450 we're short uh, in 11, that's a total of 1,035,000. In addition, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about ordinances tonight, uh, ordinances that affect people, but we have a significant ordinance that says in order to keep our bond rating, we need 18% of our general fund reserve balance based on next year's budget. Currently, we're at 16.3%. Uh, in order for us to get to 18%, we probably need another $600,000 in that fund to meet that specific ordinance. So we also need to keep that in mind. Uh, if we added that to the total shortfall, it would be in excess of $1.6 million. The only thing that we have hanging out uh, that uh, as a potential savings, as I said, is on uh, police patrol at this point, which could be up to 230000 if they had ratified the contract. Um, unfortunately, by the time we go to budget press uh, through mediation and eventually arbitration, we probably won't have anything settled until probably early, early part of next year. That's all I have. Thank to you. Have. Any questions for uh, Mr. Amodio? Alderperson Koth. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, as far as the, the garbage, there were estimates. Did any of the uh, firm bids come in for privatization of garbage? Uh, they're going to be in by this Wednesday. There'll be, again, some details to iron out, but uh, they promised to have quotes to, into us by Wednesday so that uh, Thursday and Friday being a holiday, we could at least, at least address them on the 28th. We didn't give them much time. Uh, <coughs> but they're going to do their best effort to get them in Wednesday. Any other questions for Mr. Maudio? Thank you, Alderman Koth. Uh, then if there's no more questions for Mr. Maudio, thanks, Jim. I'm going to turn it over to... You want to stay up here in case uh, we have to... Right. it be my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess, first off, um, as you guys know and have heard, these are not going to be very easy decisions. Um, we've looked at a lot of different options um, and bantered around, around, many, uh, bantered around many. Um, 
but even again after this year, and I, this is more of an editorial for um, you know, general consumption, but um, you know, hard decisions are going to have to also be made in years going forward, which obviously many of them could include uh, increases in fees, um, increases in taxes, um, those things because you know, I don't personally think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit out there anymore. Um, I think we've done a, a pretty good job over the years of, of kind of weeding out a lot of the excess and fat, and now the cuts are going to be um, to the core of, of services. Um, so that said, um, I'll start off with the, the first one, um, which would be um, eliminating the city dispatch, um, effective 7-1. Um, and turning it entirely over to the county. Um, by doing that on 7-1, um, because we would have to, uh, right now we pay roughly $1.1 million for city dispatch. Of course, every resident of the city of Sheboygan also pays for county dispatch. So the average city resident pays about $27 a year, where the average county resident pays about nine. So by combining that or turning that over to the county, um, the city, um, on an annual basis, we'll be able to sell, uh, save about 1.1. There's going to be some new staff we have to hire to do some of the administrative functions. Um, I'm sure <coughs> Chief Domodolski can speak to what those would be. Um, but in, the, in this upcoming budget year, <coughs> my estimate would be about 350000 of savings. Um, secondly, would be um, reducing the funding to the library. Um, of somewhere between 100 and 200,000. The initial 100,000 came from the Walker Bill, not necessarily from operations. Um, the next would also be um, a reduction of about 150,000 from the police department. The fourth, um, one of the challenges we face if we do decide to stay in the garbage business is that we have about $1.6 million of new equipment we have to purchase because the trucks we have now are just not going to continue to last. Um, one of the options to do that, and in addition to other equipment um, that we have to purchase. Right now we have about $2 million in our motor vehicle fund. Um, DPW alone has requested that $2 million. 1.6 in garbage trucks and 400,000 in various other pieces of equipment. Um, my thinking would be um, to implement a, uh, and again, a dollar amount we can debate over, a three to five dollar equipment fee, um, equipment replacement fee, whatever you want to call it, because we're also going to have um, probably within the next couple of years another fire truck, and of course, some, uh, um, maybe even some squad cars, but certainly a fire truck and a, the equipment we need for DPW. Um, that fee, again, um, could either be on the water bill or, or um, I don't think we can get it in for this year, but also on the tax bill. A three to five dollar would be anywhere between 630 and a million, a million fifty a year. Those dollars would be go to paying off. Obviously, it's not going to pay for the garbage trucks in the first year. We'd have to finance those trucks, um, and then again, the goal would be to pay them off over a few, uh, a few years using that fee. I would also propose that we sunset that fee, um, pick a date into the future. And if it, uh, not one of these, it would sunset, unless the council continues it, it would be a hard sunset, um, and then go from there. Um, the top three options um, would be roughly about uh, 700000 of savings. Um, we are reviewing various other fees. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's my belief um, that fee for service um, for those things that are for the general good, police, fire, garbage, again, this is Don's opinion, but police, fire, garbage, and those others, you know, those are general goods, should be paid for by the tax, by the taxes, by, the, by everyone. Um, things that are specific to an individual, things like, you know, bartender's licenses, all those types of things. Um, clear water, um, I don't think anybody should have to subsidize me selling my house. Same thing with other types of uh, fees. Um, I don't have a dollar amount for those. It's not going to be you know, hugely significant, but I think, again, it covers the cost of um, our staff um, doing the things they have to do to approve those licenses. So um, that's where we're at. Again, part of the goal was not only to just fill this hole, but look at you know, 12 or 13 and going forward. Um, 
and how we can deal with some of these issues that we're dealing with now. So, but all I had. Any questions for uh, Alderman Hammond? Uh, I guess I'll ha I have one starting out, and that is uh, in lieu of a f garbage fee, uh, uh, whatever we want to call it, uh, Mr. Amodio and, and Mr. Beevil maybe can answer this question. I know you've had some discussions on it, and I had uh, this recommendation from one of my constituents, uh, Mike Hutz, who used to work for the city, called me yesterday regarding the garbage, and uh, he mentioned that rather than going to a fee, uh, that the motor vehicle rates should be looked at. And in talking with Mr. Beeble, uh, I guess this morning, uh, that had been going on on a yearly basis for a number of years, and those motor vehicle uh, rates have not really been looked at for the last two or three years. And I'm wondering, in lieu of the fee, uh, if we were looking at those motor vehicle rates, what kind of revenue we could expect if those, re those rates for reimbursement for motor vehicle were increased? Um, we've looked at those this past year, and Dave's done a good job of allocating the costs. Unfortunately, 90% of the costs that get allocated for vehicles are in the general fund. Mm -hmm. So it would just make our hole bigger. And just to reiterate what Don said a little earlier, um, in 2010, we ended up with $3.1 million as a reserve balance in the motor vehicle fund. In 2011, to fund the operations, i.e. the expenses, the gas, the mechanics that fix and the parts to repair our vehicles, we used $600,000 of that fund reserve balance. So in 2011, best case, we'll end up at $2.5 million as a reserve balance. In 2012, if you look at the budget, close to $400,000 is coming out of that fund reserve balance to fund operations. So it will take our fund balance down by the end of 12 without any capital outlay to $2.1 million. If in fact we do uh, the vehicles that are requested by motor vehicle, i.e. Uh, garbage trucks as well as other fleet vehicles they need to replace, our fund will have a zero balance. And on a go forward basis, uh, without the ability to fund it, uh, over and above what the operations are, uh, we'd actually have to close that special revenue fund, and that would mean roughly seven or eight hundred thousand dollars of those costs would slide back into the general fund for all of the maintenance on the vehicles that the general fund uses. So we're not in a real good situation there. Uh, how much is slated right now with the current rates that we're using in motor vehicle reimbursements? How much money will be going into, is slated to go into the motor vehicle fund for 12 the way it stands right now? $1.1 million and another half a million dollars for vehicle rental, so about 1.6. Okay, so that's going in right now. That's going in, and to fund the operations from an expense side, it's $2 million. Okay. And the biggest pieces of those, Jim, are roughly 550000 in gas, uh, 500000 for vehicle parts, and the balance is all uh, employee-related labor and benefits. Uh, just to uh, expand a little bit on what Alderman Hammond was talking about, dispatch, uh, the state of Wisconsin highly encourages one part of county government, whether it be the county or the city, to run dispatch and not have two dispatches like we've had in Sheboygan County for many, many years. Uh, in fact, whenever any funds come down to buy dispatch equipment, it goes to one designated part of the government, and the state of Wisconsin right now recognizes the county as that provider of dispatch. For example, I think it was two or three years ago, the state provided 80000 I believe it was seventy or $80,000 uh, in money that could be used by Sheboygan County uh, to use in their dispatch operation. The city of Sheboygan, because we're not really the designated dispatcher for Sheboygan County, even though we provide dispatch, we never get the funds and the benefit of any of those funds. So whenever we have to make any purchases for our dispatch center, it's on the taxpayer's back, where the county uh, benefits from that. Uh, 
uh, as I don't think it's any, uh, it's any surprise that we've been in negotiations with the county for many years to make this a combined dispatch. I remember back four years ago, this was almost the dead issue in Alderman Verhasselt and myself kept this issue alive and there's been continuing discussions for the last four years and it just hasn't gone anywhere. And uh, I see this as an opportunity if the county is not gonna combine dispatch with us to get out of this business and let the county handle this service because they're the ones that are actually the designated one right now as far as any, any funds from the state. So uh, I would support getting out of the uh, dispatch uh, on July 1st. Uh, and it's certainly no reflection on our, on our dispatch department. Uh, that department has done an excellent job over the years, but it is not a service that's mandated uh, for us to provide. Uh, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I guess I would respectfully disagree with you, and I'll be curious to see what the chief has to say, uh, number one, about the uh, cost savings and the actual elimination of the dispatch. We're still going to have to pay people to do dispatch. Um, the county will only be mandated to answer the emergency calls. They won't have to answer any non-emergency calls, which, and again, the chief hopefully can shed some light on, is still a large percentage. When that officer's out on the street and picks up that radio and calls, he's not going to call the county. He's still going to call the city. Um, whenever there's a... Uh, any type of call, they're still going to have to have someone to answer the phone. So I, I don't think that we're going to have quite the savings of what, we're, what we think we're going to have. Um, and obviously, I think the, the services are still going to excuse me, suffer. And I don't think that that's uh, obviously in the best interest of what we're looking for as far as the... Um, I think it's also kind of a slap in the face for those of us that have been on the board um, to do the uh, combined dispatch that you're just basically going to throw it here and say, take this and and be done with it. So I think it's kind of a slap in the face to all of us that have uh, worked hard on that and um, yourself, Mr. Chair, uh, over all these years. Thank you. Uh, I, believe, I believe Alderman Hammond has had some discussions with Adam Pena, and I don't know what he can <coughs> share, but some recent discussions, and it's my understanding that combining the dispatch is going nowhere. There are certainly some challenges to combining <coughs> the dispatch. Um, you, by their own admission, they don't feel that they can bring their board together to do that. Um, whether it's, you know, I'm not going to speak for them. I don't know what the reasons are. Um, but it doesn't look like it's anything that's going to happen or could happen. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think just the concept of combined dispatch is, as, as I've been involved with this, and especially over the last month or so, um, I think we've been framing the argument wrong, candidly. I think the argument has been, instead of combined dispatch, it should be which municipality, or which unit of government is going to take it over. Um, issues with protocol, those types of things. So um, I don't, uh, you know, I apologize if you think it's a slap in the face, because um, I've dedicated a very good portion of my life to, to working on this as well. Um, but I also think it's, it's one of those things you can't ignore when it's almost a three to one expense. So, um, you know, again, if, if we certainly can open the floor to the chief and get his opinion on some of these things that uh, Alderman Riesler pointed out. But, um, you know, I, I'm not looking at, I don't think, uh, I wouldn't see combined dispatch happening under its current, under the current formula or under the current way we're proposing it. I've tried that, the button didn't work. Alderman Riesler? Uh, thanks, I guess I'd like to open up the floor to the chief if you'd like to come up and, and, and talk about it. I guess I'm, I'm, I have a hard time, as I do with many things, of, of us trying to micromanage the departments when we've never been there and other than two of us on here have never even uh, really been on the other side of a police radio or known what's going on or, or knowing what our safety is uh, out there and, and wanting the best quality service we can provide for the citizens. And uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm curious to the chief's uh, viewpoint of this and obviously, you know, my displeasure to all of it. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Chief? Good evening. I would say that the biggest problem I have with this is that it's pretty difficult for me to give an informed decision when nobody's spoken to me about it or brought it up, asked for my input, asked for me to look into anything. It just gets dumped on me and, and you're told to come up and the magic answer out of a hat. I apologize, sir. But um, 
as many of you know, I've been pushing for combined dispatch. I think it's obviously the way to go because the burden that it does place on the city taxpayers and because I think that there's an opportunity to get a better service by combining. But just pushing it over onto the county in that short of a time frame is going to leave a, a serious service gap to the citizens of this city because the county is not prepared to take that over. If I, I think that's the bottom up. line. <clears throat> Do you see not having two dispatchers in that dispatch center? I don't know what we would need without looking at it. Right. I guess I, I guess in, in just my rationalization in my head are someone has to relieve the person. Um, when we're having breaks or you're having uh, something going on, you know, we have to, we, we schedule, obviously we don't schedule for, we need a body here, we can only have one. We have to have someone who's taking days off, someone who is filling in for that person, someone when there's more than um, enough going on. I guess the second question I have is, would you agree or disagree, other than the emergency calls, there's still a large volume of calls that come into that dispatch center? Sure. I guess that's where my, my I, I, probably the majority of calls, I would say emergency calls probably make up about 10% at the best. So you still have to have somebody answer those phone calls that aren't the emergency line. Yes. Even if we go to combined dispatch, one of the things that we've addressed in the plan is that there has to be people there staffing the front desk and taking those administrative calls and directing people to and, and, other and services. Validating, and, and, and validating warrants and uh, um, responding to the warrants within the time frame for other agencies. I mean, those are all responsibilities that are technically non-emergency responsibilities, correct? Yes. Thanks. Uh, Chief, uh, you, uh, in, in the communities where you have a county dispatch and then you have a municipality, for example, I take Janesville, for example, where they have a separate operation for their dispatch, but I'm sure the Janesville Police Department. How do they? Do you uh, do you know how the are those those non-emergency calls are handled in those municipalities? Or from your experience down in Milwaukee, how are uh, Milwaukee has their own dispatch center. Milwaukee County has a dispatch center. But in those other scenarios where where there is a county where there is a county dispatch, and then you have a municipality with a large town like Janesville. Uh, I would imagine Most of those issues are worked out in a collaborative way so that there's MOUs in place to maximize where the calls are taken. Mm -hmm. Alderman Hammond. Thanks. Chief, um, 911 calls that come in from a cell phone, that's an, obviously a growing number of calls, correct? Yes. And those are going into the county now, right? Yes. And then there's a transfer process that goes from the county to the city? Yes. How much additional time on average is, is it? Um, I've heard anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half by the time the transfer and, the, and everything is uh, dispatched. Is that a fair or an accurate? Probably fair, yes. Okay. So by combining the dispatch, um, that would eliminate theoretically would eliminate that issue. It would increase. If the dispatch was combined, if we're just dumping and, and telling the county here, you're picking this up, the county's not going to pick up everything that would be worked out in an MOU, essentially, situation that, that there's an intergovernmental agreement on how things are going to occur. Thanks. Alderman Reisler. One final comment. I guess, again, I will apologize on behalf of the, the uh, council for no one consulting with you before this. I, I think that's very unprofessional, and, and I apologize on behalf of the committee. You, you have a, a large stake in, in this, um, whether it's the $150 fee that's gone or, or the dispatching, and, and I, I guess I apologize for that. Any other questions for the chief? Thanks, chief. I've been involved in these negotiations. I haven't been on the Shared Services Committee, but let me tell you, the frustration of the people that are actually on the Shared Services Committee, uh, basically, uh, I think it was about three, three meetings ago, the Shared Services Committee, I think 
with the exception of one county board supervisor, uh, wanted the chief and the sheriff to come to, to come together and get this combined dispatch done. And in every ensuing meeting since that, it's been excuse, excuse, excuse uh, why this is not going to happen. And uh, this has been debated for 40 years, and I don't think it's going to happen. I just don't think uh, that combined dis dispatch is going to happen. And uh, if we have to take a few more months to iron out everything, uh, then I think uh, basically this should, this should be a county function. And again, I got to say again, the state of Wisconsin highly recommends that one unit of government does dispatch for a county. And if it stays the way it is currently, the citizens of Sheboygan are not going to be of any benefit from any money that comes down from the state of Wisconsin for equipment purchases. It's all going to the county as the seventy or $80,000 did a couple years ago. And I don't think it's fair to the city taxpayers to continue to have this burden. So I think the uh, logistics can be worked out, but I think it's time we get out of the dispatch business. My personal feeling, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Chairman. I, I guess I just want to say, as, as chairman of the City County Shared Services Committee, I don't feel that way. I feel that we are making progress there. Um, I know we've, we've talked about this for a long time. It's been 40 years in the making, but uh, I think that our last meeting, uh, I thought it was a positive meeting. Um, 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 our IT department showed us some things that could be worked out, um, and I, I, I felt that our county board supervisors were on board, that were there. Uh, they're on board with it. It's just a matter of taking some small steps to, to make this happen. And, and I truly believe, I feel very positive that that this will happen. Um, and I don't think that we need to j just go dumping things onto people um, without talking about it. Um, we do have a timeline uh, already put into place. Um, we, we have, uh, we've gotten information. Uh, I, think we, I think it's a good thing and I think we are gonna make some progress in making this happen. We just don't have to dump it on anybody. We are working together and we will we'll do it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. With, with all due respect, I've been sitting in, in some of those same meetings and also some meetings that uh, uh, Alderman Hammond has been having with, uh, with uh, Adam Payne, and uh, I'm not getting the same vibes on it at all. Uh, I, I just don't think it's going to be a continued stall, uh, just like it has been for the last four years, excuse after excuse, and it never happens. And again, I get back to the point that the state of Wisconsin is encouraging one part of county government to be responsible <coughs> for dispatch. And I resent our taxpayers continually not being benefit of any funds that are coming down from the state. They're all going to the county. And when we have to put in a new council at the dispatch center, we're paying for it. We're not getting a nickel from anybody. And the county is benefiting and the state, again, is encouraging one entity of government in a county to do dispatch and it's Sheboygan County, and uh, many counties are either going to combine dispatch or one entity. Uh, and that's just, the, that's just what's happening in Wisconsin. And may I just go ahead? Thank you. And, may, and, and that's the end goal. And, and, and I believe we're gonna, we will get there. If we can, this is a shared service that, we can, that we're working on, and, and we are making progress. <laughs> Alderman Carlson, you're next. Thank you, Chairperson. I, I guess at 40 years, that's a long time. At some point, you gotta cut the cord. Um, I, I understand government's supposed to move slow, but 40 years is ridiculous. I've also had the pleasure of sitting in some of these meetings, and I, I don't see the, this, this progress that you're talking about, with all due respect. So I, I, I support this. Any other comments on that? Uh, I'm going to make a motion that uh, we get out of uh, the dis get out of uh, dispatch uh, by July 1st. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion, Alderman Raisler? I guess I'm trying to contain myself. Mm -hmm. 
I think I'm hopefully doing a good job of it, and I mean no disrespect to anyone. Again, you're looking at micromanaging something that the chief of police, the head person, the department head, the person we put in charge of the department has not even been involved in any of these meetings. I am assuming that this is probably one of the first times he's heard of this, and now you'd like to make a decision after all these secretive meetings, which I'm very, very disappointed at, and, and you want to do something that you don't even know is going to save money at this point in time. And I'm not going to go out and guarantee it's not going to save money, but I'm going to tell you, you are going to have to have people still employed in that dispatch center, and I don't even know if you're going to be able to cut a few positions. I think we need to do our research on this before we start to make motions on eliminating positions and doing things that the, 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 the chief and I think the fire chief has, has a, a valid interest in this as well because those are pe people that are going to be performing dispatch functions for him that I, I, I don't know, I guess I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say I don't think you've heard of this before. Um, th wow, this is, it's disappointing to say the least much more, what do you think the responsibility or the response is going to be from the county when it comes to any joint dispatch? We don't need to have meetings anymore because we're just going to throw this in their face and we're going to be eliminated by it. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know, very disappointed, very, very disappointed. Alderman, Alderman Hammond. Um, I, I can understand where you're coming from, Alderman Riesler. Um, was the sheriff chief, at any of these meetings? The chief has been was in all... Was the sheriff at any of these meetings? Let me finish. I let you finish. The chief was in all those meetings. The sheriff was in all those meetings. Inspector Bruckbauer was in all of those meetings. So all of them... The fire chief? The fire chief, we have had that conversation. He was not in those meetings. These are all stakeholders in what's going on. Much more the public safety aspect of it for our citizens. Uh, I, I just can't see rushing this along to, to, we have not even done a financial to see how much it's going to save. There is no money even on the table to say this is going to save this much money or it's not. Because you don't know. Neither does the chief doesn't know. If that's the case, then why would we combine? Because you're saying that there's... We know there's not going to be money saved by combining. You're saying there's no savings by combining. There isn't. Then, we know that. Then why would we do it? For the efficiency, for the effectiveness for the citizens of Sheboygan and the county to make a better service. But you just said there wouldn't be because we have all the administrative costs. So why bother? We go into the shared dispatch knowing that there's going to be a cost involved in it. All right? We are going into this not knowing if there's a cost involved or savings. We owe it to at least find out whether there's a savings before we do this or before we make a motion to do this. So out of $1.1 million, you're indicating... By I don't know. Turning, by turning dispatch over, you don't think that there's any savings whatsoever to be gained? No, no. No one's looked into it. No one's asked well, the chief. I disagree. We have asked the chief. Then tell me what the savings are. How many people are we going to let go? Do you even? How many people do we have in there now? Fourteen. Full time, part time. Fourteen full time equivalents. Just did this. Just did. Fourteen point six. And how many are we going to lose? All of them. Uh, what do you mean, how many are we going to lose? How many are you going to eliminate? I don't think any of, those guys, any of those dispatchers would go to the county considering they're trained oh, no, on the same exact equipment. About. Who's going to do the dispatching for the city? I think that still needs to be worked out. Well, we have to have some answers to this before we're looking at eliminating something is my, is my whole point behind this. You can't just go and say we're going to cut it. Oh, but by the way, we need 12.6 equivalents to do the job we're doing now. That's not getting us to our end goal here in, in, in balancing the budget. I, we're just going to have to agree to disagree with this. On, I mean, I think that there's substantial savings to be had by doing this. Number one, uh, if we if we got a 1.1 million uh, uh, line item in our current city budget, and that 1.1 million goes over to the county, uh, we're paying uh, for 2012. We're paying 28.32 percent of the county levy city taxpayers, that right there is a savings of uh, almost uh, $340,000. Uh, so that leaves a net 
a net uh, savings of around eight hundred and forty or fifty thousand dollars. We understand that we'll have to maintain some clerical positions in the police department to deal with some of the stuff you were talking about. I think the initial figure floated around and that was uh, around $200,000. If we get out of this July 1st, uh, we're going to potentially save three hundred and eighty to $400,000 yet in 2012. Again, you were talking about, no offense, Mr. Chair, things you know <clears throat> nothing about. All right, you're not going to keep $200,000 worth of clerical people. You are going to keep dispatchers to answer the phone, to dispatch calls, to dispatch the fire department. You're going to keep all this. You're not going to lose this. I'm, I'm not sure uh, where we disagree on this or how we can disagree. You cannot get out of the dispatch business 100%. It's not possible. You're not going to keep three people behind to do clerical. Someone has to be over. And the, and the reason you're not understanding is because you have no understanding of the job. We're micromanaging like we always do, and we shouldn't be doing it. We should be looking to the department heads for the suggestions and saying, what is the best route? I'm not going to talk for the chief because I don't want to disrespect him any more than we already have. But I think he's going to tell you he knows how to run his department a lot better than we do, who most of us have no knowledge whatsoever of the police department. We're not going to get out of the dispatch business. Well, a lot of municipalities have gotten out of the dispatch we business. We are not. <laughs> I'm just telling you plain out, you can't. We're too big. We're, we're, we're a city. We have certain responsibilities. We have statutory requir requir uh, requirements. It's not going to happen. Then why is the state recommending that there's only the one part of government runs then make dispatch? A, if they wanted it, they would make it a statute that we could only have one dispatch. They're making recommendations. They make recommendations on everything. They make unfunded mandates, mostly. All right? If they so choose that the majority of the money goes to the county, we have no say in it. That's the way it is. Well, I All think right? that's, that's a pretty strong statement on the part of the state if they're sending money to, uh, that they're sending money just to the county. Uh, Alderman I, Van Akron, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to, I, I guess for full disclosure, m myself and, and um, Alderman Reisler obviously employed at the Sheriff's Department. That's why I've been silent through this entire process. Um, and I will be abstaining on any such vote just because, again, being employed at the Sheriff's Department and having the Sheriff's Department then take on these responsibilities, I think it'd be inappropriate for myself. I'm not going to speak for Alderman Reisler but certainly for myself to take any kind of vote or, or to try to sway anybody's opinion. Um, we work closely with the dispatchers at the Sheriff's Department. Their jobs, and as well as mine, certainly will be affected by any changes with that. So again, I will be abstaining and, and um, not partaking in any of the, the conversation or trying to make any points. Again, I do have an opinion on it. However, I'm, I, because of my position, I think it's appropriate to abstain. Thank you. Alderman Sampson, you're next. No, I'll withdraw. Withdraw. Alderman Hammond. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This seems like a really, really drastic measure. But we're, we're, we're charged with making really tough decisions and a really tough time. And over and over and over again, I hear from everybody who talks to this body when it comes to making these decisions that we keep kicking the can down the road. Forty years we've been trying to, trying to work this out for four years serious discussions. This forces the issue. As drastic as it sounds, is this forces the issue. We know when we've got to have this accomplished by. I, it doesn't sound good. I, I agree it doesn't sound good, and I'm still going to support it because it forces the issue. It makes the decisions we need to make to move forward. We're, we're, what do we look at? We, we're going to drag our feet on this one some more? We, we've got to get something done. We've got to get something done. It doesn't, it, it doesn't taste good. It never does. But we've got to make a decision. We've got to move forward. This forces an issue that's been dragged out for 40 years. I haven't been alive for 40 years. This forces the issue. Thank you, Alderman Haman. Uh, Alderman, Alderman Matichek, you're next. 
Thank you. I have to agree with uh, Alderman and Corey Reisler. Uh, I, I believe that we do need to uh, he at least hear from the, uh, the police chief before we make a decision about this. We created a chief administrative officer because we believed in the trained professionals to run and lead the city, but yet here now we're totally ignoring the trained professional uh, handling this situation. And I, I'm going to have to agree that uh, we need more discussion about this. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Chairman. I guess just using that logic, every director is going to tell us not to do any cuts. So, I mean, that, that's what we're here for. Every director is going to give their opinion. We, we have to make that final say. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Is there any further discussion? Yes, I would Alder like Person to. Kittleson. Thank you, Chairman. And I, I, I have to reiterate, we... We shouldn't be doing something as drastic as this without more more input as to really what it's going to save us, more study. Um, we need to, to, to hear more on this. And, and as far as doing something like this, I don't know then how the county is going to feel about sharing anything else with us. We have a shared services committee. We're, we're working on it. Uh, please let us do our work. Please let us do our work on this. Um, we, we are making progress. I think we can go forward with this and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Prison Kittleson. Alderman Versi, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pretty much a simple question to the chief. You have a timeline? Could you make it work? Just to follow up on, on your comment, Alderman Versi, uh, there's a possibility that if the county got into dispatch, they could use our facility over at the police department, Chief? We could work out something? I mean, we're, we've got a state-of-the-art dispatch center over there with enough councils. We could be primary if this comes to fruition, and the county could be backup. They wouldn't have to build their one point five million dollar addition onto their dispatch center use that for backup we've got a state-of-the-art department there we may have to add one more dispatch council uh, so I think these are all things that could be worked out I can't speak for what the county's do, Chairman. but it is a possibility that they could use us as the primary dispatch center and use theirs as a backup Well, when the county taxpayers are faced with building a $1.5 million addition on the county courthouse, I think they may be singing a different tune when they've got a state-of-the-art dispatch center available at our PD. Um, Alderman Belt, you're next. I just have a quick question to Alderman Kittleson. How many more years do you need to work this out? I, I, I can't. I can't answer that. I haven't been, I've only been chairman of the committee a short time, and I know how I feel, and I know I'm committed to making it happen, and I'll work really hard to do that, and I have been working hard to do it, and, and that's, all I can, that's all I can tell you. That, that's what I can do. I mean, it, nothing's happened in four years now. I don't see it happening anytime soon, unless we put our foot down. I, I respectfully disagree. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Belt. Is there any other discussion? I believe we have a motion on, on uh, Alderman Matichek. Uh, well, it brings up a good point of a question of if the county can handle it at this point right now and not public safety, the, the delay in response, uh, along with if we just drop this in, in their bucket, if you will, uh, what kind of negotiations yeah. does that make for the future? Or, or would they be even more willing to come to our, our police department and make it a, their main uh, dispatch center? Or would they just find that as resent that meant that the city is just going to do whatever, however they want, and not negotiate anything? Good, good Thank question. you for your comments. Any other, any other comments? We have a motion and a second on the floor. I believe my motion was to... Uh, for the city to get out of the 9-11 uh, dispatch service by July 1st of 2012. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Deckers excused. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kath? Aye. 
Kittleson, no. Matichek, no. Raisler, abstain. Sampson, aye. Van Akron, abstain. Vanderweel, aye. And Versi, aye. We have 10 ayes, two noes, and two abstentions. Motion carries. Uh, the next thing on uh, Alderman, uh, our vice president's uh, list was the library funding, uh, cutting that of what was it? <coughs> you were proposing a 100000 or a $200,000 cut, Alderman Hammond? Just ideas. Just ideas. Hundred to $200,000. Any, uh, anybody want to have any discussion on that item? Uh, Alderman Belt, you're first. I guess I have a question. When people come in and uh, request a <coughs> library card, is there any cost to that? No. I don't believe so. Please. They can't. It's, no. a, it's a quick right. answer, but I'll come up and use <laughs> the microphone. No, there is no fee for that, and by state statute and interpretations by the Attorney General of state statute, the library, public libraries in the state of Wisconsin cannot charge fees for poor services. Having a library card, being able to check out materials would be a core service. So unless there's a change to that statute and the way it's interpreted, you can't charge fees. Okay. Okay. Next we have Alderman Sampson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, just on this topic for the library is the idea. We're, we're not talking about a full 200,000. We've already eliminated, so to speak, uh, from the Walker Bill, the hundred thousand from the uh, from the retirement and health benefit contributions has already been done, so we're, we're really looking for an additional hundred thousand, right? Okay. It's up Thank to you. this body. Right. Alderman Riesler. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Again, we've cut from the library the last two years. Uh, I don't think it's a legitimate place to uh, to cut from. I, I understand that everybody has to pay their part. I think they've been more than uh, willing to do it, we've heard, and, and I hear from my constituents on a, on a weekly basis how important it is. Uh, it, it's a, a community center. It's, it's got all these things wrapped in one. And, and again, I just I, I can't support any cuts to the library. And I actually get to vote on this because I don't work for the library. Alderman Raisler, I'm, I'm happy to report that this is something you and I can agree on. There's got to uh, be something. <laughs> uh, I think I think the from what I've been on the city finance committee for. Uh, this is my sixth year, and uh, I think the uh, library has been a good steward of the of the money that we provide to the library. Uh, they did step up to the plate with that one hundred thousand uh, dollars for the Walker Bill, and I believe the library board has been good stewards for two thousand and twelve in rejecting a number of pay increases, even for senior staff at the library. So, and then besides hearing from many of my constituents last year when we went through this and hearing people tonight, I think this is a core service that we should provide and in my opinion, the library has have been very good stewards of the taxpayer dollar. So I am not going to support any cut to the library funding. Uh, next we have Alderman Versi. Thank you. I'll add to the shock of agreeing with Alderman Raisler. I'm alongside you on that with, obviously we live in the same district having the same, maybe the same people calling but it's overwhelming response, and this is actually one of the many duties that you do have to listen to your constituents along with privatizing the garbage, same scenario. Um, I originally voted for privatizing the garbage, but the, the overwhelming response to both library and garbage, that is our duty to listen to the constituency, and that's what you're elected to do. Um, and in this, this manner, it's the same, same thoughts. Um, there's gotta be other departments we can look at. Um, once again, we always overlook other departments, but we'll get into that in the future. But as far as library goes, kind of in the same, same ballpark. We already got 100000 from them. We also need to spread our wings and look at other departments. Alderman Hammond. Um, and I'm, at this point, not going to advocate one way or the other which way I'm going to come down on, that, on the library one. Um, I was asked to throw out various options. Um, but I do, as I listen to the conversations, and these are very difficult for me as well, um, 
as I listen to the conversation, I hear that pretty much everything is a sacred cow. <clears throat> and I find it very difficult when everything is sacred to figure out where we're going to fill the hole. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these are going to be some very, very difficult decisions that we have to make. And if everything is off limits, where's the dollars going to come from? Because we can't raise taxes, ladies and gentlemen. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to follow off of one thing, and I don't think there's anybody left here from the press, but I know Mike Kinzel is here or people from the press on the outside. If we could maybe get that across so that the people know that we can't raise taxes. I've been getting a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails saying, just raise the taxes. I can take it off my federal tax. Uh, we, we understand that, but we can't. And that, that is something I think we just kind of need to get out there that we're not allowed to do that. And that's pretty much a, a done deal and a closed item. And that being said, I guess I will make a motion and we'll see if it gets support or not to um, not privatize the garbage, uh, to keep the garbage the way it is, and to add a $5 fee per month onto the water bill to pay for the city run uh, garbage. Second. Who is the second? Alderman Van Akron. We have a motion and a second not to outsource garbage and to have a $5 a month fee. And what was that going to be used for? It would be to subsidize the, our own garbage instead of privatizing it. <clears throat> Take the discussion whenever you have a second. We'll have, yeah, we'll have Alderman Hammond. Um, I guess I, on the surface I agree with you. Sorry, going back to the agree. <laughs> Um, I, I guess the challenge I have um, is, you know, I would like to see that fee be used for equipment, for the actual trucks, not for the operation. And I'd like to see some sort of sunsetting on that. Um, now, again, future councils can decide to re-put that in, but we all know when these things get in, they're there for life. Um, and it's not always going to be the situation where we can't raise income ta or raise taxes. Um, not that that's my first option for anything either, but. I think you know, it should be a very defined purpose what that fee is going to be used for, and there should be a sunset. I, I think it's going to be used for, to, to subsidize the garbage collection. That's going to free up the money from the general fund that we're not, or from the uh, money that we're not paying for something else to help balance the budget. It comes to about 1050000 So what do we do with the equipment purchase? Take it out of the motor vehicle fund and deplete it? Yeah. We're going to have to take it out of the motor vehicle fund. So 1.6 for the first. Uh... Now, I guess in our discussion is I'm, I'm more than willing to see what these numbers come back as on Monday to make sure that we are doing it more efficiently. And I guess this gives us some time that if we decide this is what we're planning on doing for the first period of time and it comes back that the rates are fair and we look at wanting to go to privatization with a five-year contract or something that makes sense, we can explore that down in the future. But right now, we can settle things essentially coming up on Monday if the numbers come in right, that this is one of our savings or one of our ways of doing it. Thank, Thank you. you, Alderman Riesler. Alderman Belt, you're next. How many garbage trucks do we own, and how many are we going to have to purchase? Mr. Beeble, could you answer, come up and answer that, please? And also, what, what type of trucks you're proposing buying, if they, you've come to a decision on that? First of all, Mr. Beeble, uh, maybe you could explain That's to the aldermen that don't know in the public why miles. we have to buy new garbage trucks. <clears throat> well, the current garbage trucks that we have, the, <coughs> the, the packer mechanism that the garbage goes into that crushes the garbage, it's, it's pretty much getting obsolete. The, the equipment's leaking. Um, it's non-functional. So it, it needs to be replaced. Uh, right now we have six garbage packers, four of them are used every day. The other two are spares, and they get rotated in. When there's equipment maintenance, the other one goes out, so there's a constant fleet available at all time for backup. So we would be looking at, moving forward, 
purchasing five trucks in the future. Um, the original budget figure that we have in here was to go to all front loader vehicles, one person operation. Currently we have eight garbage collectors, two on each truck. The thought process was to go to five trucks, front loaders, one man operation. That was the original proposal, but in, in hindsight, looking at this, the, the, the equipment is quite large. In many of the areas of the city, especially in the, um, what I would say, the older sections, we have a lot of alley pickups. We have um, areas where the streets are narrow, wires and trees, so the front loader mechanism wouldn't be that conducive. We would look at using those in the outline, the newer areas where it's wide open, so I'm looking probably at two of those types of trucks and purchasing three of our dual rear packers yet moving forward, so a combination. Alderman Bell, did you want to follow up? Could we okay, buy the two front loaders that you're talking about and uh, maybe one or two of the other ones this year and then next year buy another one or the, two? It, Regardless, if we, if, if we get permission to purchase, there's a long lead time on this type of equipment, anywhere from six to nine months. Um, this type of equipment isn't sitting on a lot that we can just go and say, I want that. They're custom built. We order them, and that's, that's the, the, the thought process is when we order them, we order, try to order five at a time because you get an economy of scale somewhat where instead of just building one truck at a time year after year, you can get five at a lower cost purchase one per year how much how much would you save by ordering five <laughs> potentially anywhere from 10 to 15 percent on, on a vehicle thank you alderman belt uh, alderman versi you're next and then Chairman. alderman hammond uh dave in capital improvement we talked about when we, we gave us the option of buying less of the front loaders you did say that there's actually gonna be a potential money savings because the other trucks cost less Correct. And if we go to only two front loaders and the three of the other ones, it's not 1.6 we're spending any longer, correct? That, that could happen. Um, I, don't, I don't have the prices yet until, until we actually go and specify the type of equipment and we go for bids. So at this point, it's, it's hard, to, hard to gauge that. Pretty, but the potential is there that it would be less than the 1.6, but I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to be 500000 less, but it would be less. less. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Hammond, you're next. Um, Dave, just a quick question. Is there a used market out there for some of these types of equipment that we might be able to pick up uh, some used? There is. There is a used market. Um, in fact, we would put our trucks on the market and uh, put them out there for auction and uh, probably get much better deal if we auction them versus trying to trade them in. What about us purchasing used that, that, equipment? That's a potential uh, especially for the, the dual rear, rear packers because um, they are readily available in the market. So I guess if we're looking to buy some time, maybe look at the used market. Um, the, only, the only issue is that um, you know, we really would have to check that out, do our due diligence because we don't want, just like ours are causing a problem, when someone buys our trucks, they're going to have that problem. So uh, we'd have to very uh, investigate the used market. Uh, next, we have Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to yield my turn over to Alderman Van Ackern, who's been Thank very, you. very patient. Uh, apparently, I am not coming through to your board, but um, <coughs> just to go back and reiterate, going down to the five trucks, you anticipate there possibly being some savings so that we wouldn't be spending that 1.6? <coughs> there, there is a potential, but yet I, we need the 1.6 just to have that in case. We don't know what the bids will come in at. Uh, it's, it's an engineering estimate at this point. Um, every year, that equipment gets more and more expensive as we delay the, re the, the replacement. Okay. And I guess this will be somewhat joint for uh, City Administrator Amodio, if you want to step up there as well. I'm going to kind of go over all some of the, 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 the discussion topic points that we went through with this last time. Um, just, just to confirm with you again, the estimates you had for going to the private side would be approximately 1.9 million, and Thereabouts. our operating costs are approximately 1.6. Is that? Million six forty-six. Okay. Um, do, doing the math under Alderman Raisler's plan um, of the five dollars a month does 
come out to, if you multiply that out, uh, so $60 a year times the, I believe it was 17,000, 17,500 households approximately? Correct. Okay. And that would generate approximately a million fifty? Correct. Okay. I, again, <coughs> the reason I was a, a certainly a vocal <coughs> opponent of privatizing is I think at this point in our financial situation, there is certainly some some things where we're going to have to raise some fees and, and starting to raise some money and a garbage fee, a garbage vehicle maintenance fee, something to that effect, I think is suitable. Um, however, I think it is our, our job to, to make sure that we are getting city taxpayers and homes and families the best deal possible. I, I have a concern if the private industries are telling us it's going to cost $1.9 million, but yet our city can do it for $1.6 do we, don't we have that responsibility to at least get them the best deal that we can? Uh, under this situation, we're charging them, it would be a charge of approximately $5. Um, again, I, I re reiterate after last week's, I, I don't like the fact that we're charging a fee of any kind, but until we make some of the <coughs> tough choices and every department isn't that sacred cow where it appears to be off limits, until we make some structural changes on what services we provide as a city, some of these fees and some of these things have to come along. Um, so I, I think this is appropriate for you. I, I, I think it is something that um, helps us bridge our deficit gap and, and it actually helps us into the future based on the numbers you've given us. Um, so I, 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 as much as I don't like the idea of adding a fee or adding any cost to city households and families here in the city, I, I do think this is something that's reasonable that I think a lot of people that I've heard from would be willing to pay to make sure that they get that same quality of service coming to their home, something they can depend on, and quite honestly, we're, we can do it cheaper than the private industries have come back and said. Um, well, if, if I can just respond to that yeah. for a second. Um, and again, if I was a private entity and I was going to go out and buy five trucks, I'd have to finance them. Mm -hmm. And that cost of money on that financing over a five-year life on a truck would be significant. So. Simple example, if we're going to spend a million and a half dollars on five trucks, we get it without cost of money. We've got the money sitting in a fund reserve balance. If I had to finance them, it would probably cost me two and a half million dollars over five years for that same million and a half dollars to pay the cost of money or the interest expense on that loan. And when you look at that, uh, currently the motor vehicle fund charges the sanitation department $325,000 a year as rental on those trucks. So if you do the math, that's like $1.6 million. That's the replacement cost. So if you had to put in a half million dollars instead of the 325, it says sanitation would be roughly $1.8 million, which would be extremely close to privatization. And don't forget, we do this not, not for profit, and they do. So it's tough to try to compare both, but if we had to put cost of money on our investment, we would be extremely close. And I agree with uh, Alder Person Hammond, with the exception of the sunset, uh, because once we put this fee in, it's very difficult to go back. Whether we're going to buy trucks or offset costs in a general fund, and we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with that stream of revenue that would come in. Uh, if we sunset it X number of years from now, we still have the same problem that somebody will be sitting here and saying, okay, we need to fill this hole now, because we agreed to a sunset. That's very difficult. Correct. Can you just go over the, the vehicle uh, maintenance fund, how that is funded? Now, you'd said that um, the, the garbage uh, DPW then puts in a, a certain amount um, each year, I would assume, to pay forward towards buying new equipment. Am I Correct. Wrong? I mean, the intent always was is that you're getting twice the replacement cost for a vehicle over the vehicle's life, whatever that vehicle is, so that it pays for the maintenance and still leaves money enough to buy a new vehicle in its simplest form. The problem we've faced, though, in the last several years is that the rates we were charging were pretty high. The vehicle usage was low. So at the end of the year, uh, the motor vehicle fund didn't charge out as much in revenue. We didn't have a lot of road construction going on. And mainly in public works, all the streets departments get the benefit of this equipment. The motor vehicle fund charges them for that. If we're not doing a lot of road jobs, the equipment isn't getting used. There's no charges to generate revenue in that fund. 
the upside is we have older equipment, but you know it's a low mileage one owner beauty, so we'll get a longer life out of it. The downside is we're not generating revenue. So without that revenue, the expenses continue for the maintenance of other equipment and the salaries to pay the mechanics to do that work. So we've been actually pulling out of those fund reserve balances in the motor pool to fund operations. So it's been a combination of lower revenue because of less usage, but still higher maintenance costs for the things we're doing down there and continuing to fund five mechanics. Correct. So if that answers your question. It does. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Koth is next. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Dave? Dave? With the, uh, with the new trucks, are we still looking at blue bags and clear bags? Yes. And would we privatize, same deal? Well, I'm assuming that that, that would be worked out, but the, 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 if we would go out, privatize an RFP and, and get those proposals, it's based on the exact same service that we currently provide. <coughs> However... There is room in their proposal. If they have an alternative method that is cheaper or more efficient that they would like to provide to the city, they, they have that ability to add that to their proposal. Okay. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think a couple things, and again, just uh, in the interest of, of plain devil's eye. First off, um, you know, the sunset, in my opinion, is, is a check and balance. It prevents a fee from being a lifetime fee. Now, if can future council say, you know, we still need that money? They can, they can certainly do that. And again, the debate is, is a public debate again versus, you know, things that sit on, or fees that sit out there for ever and ever and ever with no discussion ever to follow. Um, secondly, you know, right now it's about $7.61 for us to pick up garbage. We had a $5 fee that goes to $12.61. And from the estimates we heard, privatizing would be somewhere between 950 and 10. Now again, just to kind of throw out, just to kind of give you an idea where the numbers are at. Now there's also some intangibles that we can't, uh, can't ignore, obviously. We privatize garbage, we sell our equipment, we're out of the business. And if rates go up in the future, we somewhat lose control over that because the cost of re-entry into that is very, is very high. Um, so, um, and there's not a lot of players in this marketplace at this point. So, uh, just uh, I guess a couple thought, uh, a couple foods for thought um, on that issue. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Uh, Alderman Sampson is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just so I can uh, rationalize this, we're, some of the opponents to privatizing garbage at nine fifty to ten dollars a month say that if you privatize, you lose control, they can raise your rates, and you have nothing to say about it. What's the difference between what we're doing and what this proposal is right now? We're, we're, we're going to, right now, propose whether it's a short-term or a long-term, whatever, uh, fee of an additional $5. That takes us above and beyond what it would have been to privatize it. So we're just as bad as those private companies who are just raising their rates. So what's going to change next year? What's going to change the year after that? We're going to keep voting. We're going to say, well, we need the money. So let's, uh, let's just add a fee. Well, it's only $2 here. It's only $5 here. Uh, so we're no different than that private business would be if they're just going to start charging a little bit more every single year. So at some point, we're, we're, we're still treading water here. We're not, really, uh, we're not really doing anything different. We either stay in the garbage business as we are uh, or, or we don't. Either way, it sounds to me like it's going to cost more every single year, whether we're doing it or whether some private company is doing it. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Heideman. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I'm really happy to hear that we're not thinking about privatizing garbage, because quite honestly, I can't support that. But the other thing I can't support is the fee. Uh, I don't know, I heard it somewhere, must have been here tonight, it was a fee for a user. Well, if you use it, then you should pay for it. So am I going to get an option not to pay this fee by not having my garbage picked up by the city of Sheboygan? Because I, I, quite honestly, I'd like to make arrangements myself rather than pay the $12. Um, so I, do you ha are we res to be responsible elected officials, are we, we going to give these people that option so they don't have to pay this fee? Or is it basically going to be a mandate by the city of Sheboygan just to pay? You're going to pay the fee, that's it. Because like I said, somebody very distinguished just said that this evening, if you use it, 
you pay for it. Well, if I'm not going to use this service and I have another way of getting rid of my garbage, then I don't want to pay that $12. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Alderman Van Akron, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I'd like to clear up some misconceptions on the numbers. Um, theoretically, garbage costs us $750 right now in our tax levy. We aren't giving that back. That's going to stay the same. So if we privatize garbage, we are adding $10 to that. Your private garbage, theoretically, would then cost $1,750. So when we throw those numbers around, make sure we're talking about the right things. Theoretically, this would be an additional five dollars, so it'd be twelve fifty compared to seventeen fifty, not the ten dollars that we're, we're talking about. So this is about half of what it would cost for privatizing, and that's that's what I'm getting to. Is I think we have a responsibility to give the best deal possible. This is certainly a lot less than privatizing, and that's why I I support this, but don't support privatizing. Is we can. We know the quality that we are offering. We know we can do it cheaper than private industry, and we're going to charge half of what they would. That's why I'm supporting it. <clears throat> just a, you're absolutely right. Um, I was just comparing the true costs. So you're absolutely right. It's not going to reduce the levy. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just if we're, going to, if we're going to discuss the folks who actually physically use the services, right now what we're proposing here uh, by attaching a $5 fee or, or whatever, even privatizing, we're only talking about the, the people who receive a property tax bill. We have a lot more rental properties out there, two, three, four family. A water bill. Two, whatever the bill is. They don't get it's another different water than, bill. It's different than your tax bill. You don't pay trash on your water bill. Well, that's where this new one would come. Either way, you're, you're talking about a person who receives a water bill now, and that's not every single person who uses the service. Physically, if you've got a two- or three-unit property, I've seen a whole bunch of two-family properties with one water meter. So the person receiving the, the, the bill to the water meter is the owner of the house. So you still have two tenants. You're not really realistically charging the users of the system. You're charging the person who either receives a tax bill or a water bill. Now, that person's going to determine how they split that up. It's up to them. But you're not really charging the users of the fee. I've got a two-family behind me, and they've got 10 or 12 garbage bags every single day, every single week that they line up. Uh, so they're using the system, but there's only one bill that comes to that property, and that goes to the owner. They're not, they're not taking responsibility for using the service. So there's, is there a way then to charge the actual users of the system? Rather than just, and that's going to spread it out over more people using the service, it may generate a little bit more revenue because there's more people paying to use the service. Rather than attaching it to the taxpayer or the water bill payer, <coughs> you charge the people who are physically using the system. Is there a way to do that? I think that, that that's where that. the 17,500 households come from, is that's the 17,500 homes are the collection route that are that is currently being collected um i think it would have Based to probably go that's through water utility, utility bill so that's not that was 17,000 living units that's 17,000 individual water. houses no that's 17,500 homes that are serviced now correct homes stops stops, stops. So, so if it is two families it is if you have a fourplex, that counts for four. but who gets the bill fourplex. but who gets the bill on that fourplex the water bills are all separate yeah, so if, if you have four water bills but if you don't have four water bills, you're missing, you're missing people. I don't think there's that many places that don't have four there's water a, bills. There's a lot of two families, and there's probably some three families out there, I would imagine, that have one or two water meters. So you're not, you're not truly addressing the billing factor to the actual, all the users of the system. I think the billing would have to go through. Oh boy. Right, but they're, but they're using the service. They're paying for the service. They're paying, or I'm sorry, they're using the service that the, that the city taxpayer or the water bill payer is, is paying for. They're throwing their garbage out, and they're not actually paying for it. You can argue that, but directly they're not. That is the intent of this, is that the, the, the users that are using it <coughs> would pay, whether it's, a, whether it's a duplex or not, I think that would have to go through city engineering to figure out the logistics of how that billing needs to be done to make sure of that. But that's where that comes from, is the stops that are currently being made by the garbage trucks. It would be $5, five per household that is currently getting that service. So that's, that is the intent of that. Like I said, I think that would have to go through city engineering to get the logistics to make sure that we have those addresses for billing purposes. Uh, Alderman Hammond, you had a point? Uh, Alderman Sampson, to your point, in looking at how various <coughs> other municipalities, if you really want to let you know, users pay it, um, 
you know, some municipalities have gone to tags, you buy tags, you pay for, you know, buck and a quarter, two bucks a tag, mm -hmm. and that goes on your bag. Some, bit, uh, some municipalities, you have to buy the bags from them um, at a buck, you know, two bucks, whatever the number is for a bag. I mean, you certainly can, you know, again, that's certainly an option. And then the more bags you have, I've got a family of five. Um, I can guarantee you we generate more garbage than, than a single family. person. Um, and that's certainly a way to do it. Those that generate more, you gotta buy the bags and that's how you do it. Um, again, it's gonna be difficult to generate or to estimate how much revenue you're gonna generate from that because I don't think we've ever did a bag count in the city of Sheboygan. Um, but again, you were asking earlier, are there other ways to do it? You know, buying tags, buying bags, however, you know, on a per bag or per tag basis. I think we have Alderman Versi is next. Thank you. Two things I can add with that. It was bag tag was one of the, one of the scenarios that I actually called the city manager at Two Rivers on how they do it. They've been bag tagging since '99. Actually, 1990 is when they started their bag tagging. That's how you get all the fair users, the people producing the garbage. And I have a family of seven, so obviously I produce more than the lady two doors down for me that puts out one little grocery, you know, bag that we talked about many times over every other week. So that is the most fair way, but yes, you can't gauge on how much revenue you're going to bring in. The second part to the 17500 I can go right down my block and count nine houses that have one water meter, but they're two families. That's one stop. So you're not, you're not billing, yes. Nine houses on my block. Here, I'll my background shaking his head. Two family homes, one water meter. They're producing twice the garbage I am. Some of them might not, but now you're billing that one water meter, that price. So you... Back to the who's going to pay for the proper amount. You, you put it on that water bill, now a little old lady down the street pays the same as the two family, and how do you come across it being a fair across to, to all of them? Two Rivers say what they were paying for each one? or 250 a tag, and that's for a 40 gallon bin or bag. Alderman Van Akron, is this a new light or is this from before? No, but I'll take it. Um. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Uh, <laughs> just to. Uh, <laughs> Just to go back to that, the 17.5 is from Department of Public Works. That's the number they gave me. That's the number of stops they make. That's not, I'm not talking about the billing side of it. I do agree that, that there will be a logistical issue to work out there, making sure that the 17,500 homes that currently get service are the ones that are getting billed. I think through city engineering and, and making sure we have those addresses that are getting billed, whether that's through the, the water service or, or through a tax bill or, or how that each home is getting that bill. I, I agree there's a logistical issue that makes sure, making sure that the, the homes that are getting the service are the ones receiving the bill. But let me say that that's the number that was given for the number of stops they make currently. That's the 17.5. How we make sure we get, that they get the $5 a, a, a month bill that everyone is getting, I think is something we have to make sure we, we figure out. Uh, Alderman Carlson is next, and I think the mayor has some comments. Uh, Alderman Carlson, you're first. Thank you, Chairperson. I guess I'd, I can support privatizing the entire garbage service for a number of reasons. Um, I, I don't agree with just attaching an additional fee, just because, I mean, we're not changing the service, but we're going to charge them more money for it. Privatizing it, sure, we're not going to lower the tax levy. I understand that. I get that, 110%. I own two houses in Sheboygan. I'm going to have to pay for garbage to pick up at both houses regardless. What we were simply... What I simply want to do is take that $1.6 million and pay for other services because otherwise we can sit here and chip away all day long. Right now, City Dispatch, we're saying $350,000, $380,000 for next year. No one wanted to make a motion on the library. I can do that next. I'll be the bad guy. That's a hundred. That's $150,000. The savings from police department possibly $150,000. That's still nowhere near the one, the one million dollar hole we're looking at. So yes, tax levy is not going to be lowered. I get that. No one's trying to pass it over as lowering the tax levy. We're simply trying to take that money, using it for other services, so we don't have to cut dispatch, library, police department, the fire department, what have you. We don't have a lot of options here. And once again, I fully understand that we're imposing an additional fee so we can pay for other services. And the fee might go up in three years, but our fee is going to go up in three years. That the cost to run our city is not going to go down anytime soon. So we can make the argument that in three or five years, they're going to raise the prices, but so are we. We're proposing that right now by just adding $5 onto the same service. So that's where I stand. Thank you, Alderman. Carlson, Mayor, did you have some comments? Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to, uh, on the garbage issue, a couple couple of things. Um, number one, the the original, um, if if garbage garbage is privatized, it will be contracted with one company. Uh, my fear in the city of Sheboygan is that if you give people uh, the option, the so-called option, okay, I don't want to have my garbage picked up, uh, our alleys are going to be filled with garbage. So I don't see that as an option, and you know, at this point. So I, th I think that uh, that that should be clear. And uh, uh, tags are, are another issue. Uh, if we if we charge per bag per tag at a city this size, I think what's the population of Two Rivers? It's significantly smaller than Sheboygan. I think we may run into the same issue. The last thing we want is our alleyways being filled with garbage, and that's you know that is the last thing that we want. Uh, whether garbage is privatized or whether we remain doing the service and charging a fee for it. I myself, um, you know, believe if the private sector can do it, government doesn't belong doing it. I mean, that's, that's my own personal feelings. Um, and, and, and I agree with Alderman Carlson on one thing. I mean, if you keep kicking the can down the road, if you're going to charge a $5 fee, uh, and then you sunset that a few years down the road, it's going to come right back again. Cost of doing business is never going down in the city. It never gets any cheaper. It always gets more expensive. So if we're going to go out, we're going to buy new garbage trucks, we're going to stay in the garbage business and charge a fee, uh, my fear of that also is, I mean, the, the uh, next person that may be the mayor of this city. You know, we used to have something called a stormwater fee, generated $1.6 million a year. It's easy to run for an office and say, I'm going to get rid of this fee. Very easily done. Uh, the problem is, how do you replace that revenue? Because the cost of doing business never goes down. It never does. So I think that the, the council needs to make some strong decisions and not kick the can down the road and say, okay, we filled the gap this year. Because as we know, I mean, we've, we, you know, we've got all these retirements in 11 we have to cover. We've got this deficit in 12, and we've got it again in 13. So, I mean, the decision needs to be made. It's a tough decision to, be, to make, but it needs to be made. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's got to be made. And, and to, to take bits and pieces, I don't think is the way to go at this time. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Van Akron, one more time. I think that's a new light again. Yes. Yes. Um, just to, to get back to some of it, after our last meeting, I, you know, I, I sat down and, and, again, just comparing the differences between us supplying the garbage service and the private side com uh, supplying the service, it, it's... We can do it for 1.6, and private is saying that they can do it approximately for 1.9. We know the quality of service we provide. We're not sure of the quality of service that we're going to see down the road. And then I, I, we get back to the, the cost factor three years from now or five years from now when that, when that contract is over and we no longer have the ability to hire, fire, or excuse me, to hire uh, garbage people to come back or to buy new trucks or to even compete with any bids that would come in at that point. I, that certainly concerns me that you could see those costs go up extremely higher, and, and we'd have no other option. Um, I think, again, it's our responsibility to make sure that we're supplying the service as efficiently and as cheaply as possible, and the city is the way to go about that. We're the ones that are doing that. Even when you add this $5 fee on, we're doing it for $12.50 a month rather than theoretically $17.50 a month. We're doing it cheaper, and, and that's the facts of it. That's why I support doing this. I don't support the fee in theory, but until we make those structural changes and decide what services we no longer are going to be su supplying to our citizens, these are some of the tough choices we're going to have to make. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, I haven't made any comments on this garbage issue yet, so I'm going to make a couple of them. Uh, first of all, I've heard loud and clear from my constituents. <coughs> I haven't heard from one constituent that is in favor of outsourcing garbage, and I'm usually a big fan of outsourcing. But in this case, I'm not in favor of outsourcing it. Uh, but I'm not going to support the fee because I, I haven't been convinced that we need a $5 fee. There's money in the Motor Vehicle Department right now to, to purchase those trucks. We're going to be replenishing the Motor Vehicle Fund. And uh, there may not be a need for additional vehicle purchases in the front in the future. I think uh, Mr. Amodio touched on that. Hypothetically, if we become creative in the Public Works Department and we outsource some of the parks work with lawn mowing and a lot of those services, that's going to mean in the in the future we're not going to have any capital outlays for those for those services. So, uh, 
I, I haven't been convinced that we need a fee, uh, and I'm not going to support this motion uh, of of uh, keeping the garbage in the city with a five dollar fee. Uh, uh, but I would support a motion that would uh, keep uh, the garbage uh, pickup in the DPW department. Is there any other comments before we take a vote on this, uh, Alderman Carlson? I guess I'm going to go back through this list real quick. We hand over uh, city dispatch to the county. That's going to anger a lot of people. Not too many people are going to be happy about that. We cut library funding. How many people came up here tonight and said, please don't cut our funding? That's not going to make people happy. We cut the police department. Our city is going to get filled with criminals. I mean, that public perception, that's what's going to happen. We cut the fire department. The town's going to burn down. Public perception. No one's going to be happy with any cut we make. We need to look past the, the fear of the garbage service turning to garbage, for lack of a better words, in three years. I don't foresee that happening. Just adding additional fees, that's going to upset a lot of people. Raising taxes, that's going to upset a lot of people. Once again, bigger picture here. We can start whittling down this stuff as we go, but we need something to plug the hole first to get us through at least the first year. Then we can start cutting other things to look to 12, 13, and 14 and beyond. Right now, we need something more than just a Band-Aid. We need a giant bandage because nothing we do is going to get us past 2013 or 14 and until we see revenue grow in the city, which is not going to happen anytime soon or fast enough. We need to make the biggest cut we can do right now. Once again, we're not. if you're here to make everybody happy, you're in the wrong job. And for me, District 8, I've received one direct phone call and one direct email. I've received every email everyone else did for garbage, but once again, in my district alone, one phone call and one email. I think the initial shock, yes, but once again, we're choosing to take that $1.6 million to pay for other services such as public safety and protection, library services for the kids. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Any further discussion? We have a motion on the floor, I believe. Do you, do you remember? I think the motion is to, Alderman Raisler, uh, was to keep garbage at, in DPW but impose a $5 monthly fee. Is that your motion? Yep. Yes. And we have a second. And we have a second. Okay. And no, with no further discussion, uh, would you please call the roll? Okay. Belt. Aye. Boren. No. Carlson. No. Decker is excused. Hammond. No. Hammond. Aye. Yes. Heidemann. No. Koth. No. <laughs> We're not going to outside. Kittleson um, says no. Um, says, no, we are not going to outsource garbage. We are going to pay a $5 fee, correct? Matichek. No. Riesler. Yes. Sampson. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Versi. No. We have ten no's and one, two, three, four. Motion, motion fails. Mm -hmm. Motion fails. Okay, I will make I will make a motion to recommend to the council that we do not outsource garbage. Second. Any discussion? Alderman Van Akron. Uh, to go back to what you had to say about uh, you're not sure whether or not we need to impose a fee, um, but at the same time. We're not going to support outsourcing garbage. I guess I'm confused on how we're going to close our budget gap. That's why we're here. That's why we keep having the same discussions over and over again, trying to figure out how we're going to solve this budget problem. If we continue to vote everything down, this is going to take a long time. Um, <laughs> I'm all open for ideas, and we can't seem to come together to get one to pass. We have the same budget issues. We have the same budget numbers. Um, I'm all, you know, for, for some of the people that haven't spoken up and, and thrown some ideas out, I, I'd certainly like to hear where you're going to come up with the money. 
Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, Alderman Carlson, you're next. Thank you. Just to go along with Alderman Van Akron, once again, I, I, I personally am looking for some suggestions because we're looking to Alderman Hammond here who listed a few things, but I don't see any other ideas from anyone else. Obviously, I'm strongly for privatizing garbage, and I'll throw some other stuff in there too, but we need something big and then a bunch of small stuff. So what's out there? That's what I'm asking. Because, I mean, Alderman Ham gave his opinion. Not that he may, he may or may not support the four or five things that he listed, but he's the only one out here throwing out ideas besides just adding an additional fee to already a uh, service already in use. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Koth is next. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, then, if I could discuss the merit raises, there's a half a million dollars for merit raises. Is that if we've got uh, 37 retirees, and not everyone gets a merit raise. Can we take some money out of that that's budgeted for merit raises? Mr. Modio? Is that an option? Could you step up to the mic, please? <coughs> Thanks. I'm kind of confused. We have, we have a, a $17 million payroll in the city, and we've got a 2% raise budgeted. So if you do the simple math, it's $340,000 for raises. Now, so in that $17 million, we've already negotiated two contracts, so we'd have to back out some of police and fire. So we probably have roughly $175,000 of non-bargaining uh, unit raises built into the city. Was there not a vote at some point for half a million dollars budgeted for merit raises? Two and a half percent was the number. And that, is that not is that five hundred thousand dollars? Two and a half percent on thirty-five million. Or I'm sorry, on seventeen million. Pretty close. Okay, so there's a half a million dollars in in uh, merit raises, with the thirty-seven retirees, which is more than we anticipated. Correct. And not everyone is going to get a merit raise. Is there some money that we can pull out of that half a million dollars? Well, it's not a half a million anymore. It's now about three forty, and of that three forty, roughly half of that is. Um, through union contracts, so we can only save half of that if we gave no raises out. Okay, uh, a few more questions then. Um, as far as the Clearwater compliance fees that are brought in, uh, that $600,000 that you're looking at adding to, you know, so we have a good bond rating, would that extra, what, 25000 be added on to that? Because that's not in the budget yet either. No, we would add the Clearwater fee into the budget, and that would reduce some of the deficit we have. Okay. Do you have any ideas that you could throw out that, because we're butting heads here with garbage, any ideas that where we could save some money? Well, I think all of the ones that we've talked about, uh, we've kind of said no to. Uh, I mean, we've talked about closing a fire station. We said we weren't going to do it. Uh, there was some talk about reducing hours in, in the city um, from 40 to 35. Um, I personally have an issue with that only because we've asked our employees to contribute 10 percent this year out of their paycheck, and by taking hours from 40 to 35, we take another 12 and a half percent away from them. So in effect, we would take 22 percent away from our employees, and these are the ones that we really care about, we want to come to work every day and do a good job. So uh, other than that, I don't know what else we can do uh, in cutting services. We've talked about all of them, and we've rejected all of them. Uh, the disappointing part is, is that at some point, regardless of our position and regardless of do, making sure we do the right thing, we have to do the right thing for the city. The goal in the city is to keep us neutral, and that neutrality is about a million dollars. It's not about, I think, as Alderman Carlson said, about getting reelected. It's about what's doing, what's right for the city. We can all say we get calls every day about people who hate taxes or more taxes. I believe if we had the ability in the city next year to raise the tax levy, that would be the cop-out. But we don't have that. So now what we have to do is put fees <coughs> in or cut services out. And that's really the dilemma that you face. These are policy decisions. I have to execute those decisions you make to make sure that we do it operationally, but the policy decisions are yours to make and what they are. 
and we're very conflicted in the way we're looking at these <coughs> things and we're very divided on what we believe in. And until we unite on the council to get a majority vote, you know, we could be here the rest of tonight and tomorrow as well as on the 28th because we're going nowhere fast. Alderman Hammond is the only one that's put forward recommendations. Nobody else really has. You, do, you keep shaking your head. What were they? I didn't hear any from you. What are they? Well, do you have a list? Shot down. Let's go. We talked about them. I mean, let's, let's stop kidding around. This is serious. So those are the decisions you have to make. Mr. Amodio, if we did go to a 35-hour work week, what would that save? Probably $200,000. For the people that we could affect, uh, we'd seriously have to talk about public works. It'd probably put us either on um, five, seven hour days or uh, four days and close on a Friday. But again, the impact to the employees is 22.5%. I understand. Just ask the question. I do. Uh, Alderman Van Akron, you're next. Um, Alderman Hammond, one of the, the uh, ideas that you uh, throughout there tonight would be a maintenance type um, fee for maintenance of vehicles. Can you expound on that? It, give some explanations as to how that would work and so on. It, again, it was essentially to, um, you know, if we decided to stay in the garbage business, um, you know, as Director Modi or uh, Chief Administrative Officer, uh, as Jim mentioned, um, that you know, with the garbage truck replacement and other equipment that needs to be replaced, they would pretty much delete the, deplete the motor vehicle fund. If you look at how that budget works, even though we got 1.1 going in, we've got expenses going out. Um, so it's not that at the end of the year, you know, it's at 2 million now, it's gonna be at 3.1 at the end of the year. No, there's revenue coming in and expenses going out. And those revenues um, are under expenses by about 400,000. So what that says is we're gonna have about $2 million left in that fund to buy those things. And again, as I mentioned earlier, at some point, you know, Chief Herman's gonna want a new fire truck. Um, not because he likes new toys, it's because, again, there's a useful life to that equipment. Um, and so, you know, you're probably looking at, and Chief, I'm just gonna throw one number out here, half million to 750,000 for, you know, vehicles. That's going to deplete that fund. It's gone. So having this, this uh, equipment fee essentially allows us to at least pay for the, the garbage trucks over the course of, you know, depending on how big the fee is, two to three years. Um, and, yes, we'd have to note for that, um, those garbage trucks in the short term, um, but, again, be paid off. Again, it's the only way I can see keeping garbage inside the city. Can you just expound on how, how that would be billed out per household? Well, again, uh, I, uh, I I thought, I'm just curious you know, we, we can split hairs on the two sta families and all that kind of stuff. I don't think there's a way to, you know, given our structure, short of going to every door and handing them a bill, to be able to do that. We, the two means we have is property tax bill and water, um, the water utility bill. Um, are you gonna miss somebody? <clears throat> Absolutely, we do now. Um, so again, I would say, you know, I would, my preference would be on the property tax bill, um, but if it was on the water utility, I'd be fine with that too. Mr. Chairman, if I may just mention one thing. You want to step up, Mayor, so everybody can hear you? Just. Just regarding um, addresses and, and fees, uh, thinking of two families with one water meter, a two-family home with one, one water meter, there's still two addresses. So it's a pretty easy way to, to, to determine how many units are in, in any home that's been broken down into two and three apartments. You're going to have an ABC. Nobody shares the same mailbox. So that would be a pretty easy way to track how many units are in each home uh, if you're, if you're look, you know, looking at at, at uh, any fees per dwelling unit or per household. So it's probably a pretty easy explanation. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Versi, uh, is this gonna be on garbage or are these other proposals? 
because we have a motion on the floor and a second mm -hmm. not to outsource garbage. And go ahead, vote on that. And we'll, we'll is there any more? Dis discussion. Is there any more discussion on the garbage issue? I got a new light here for Alderman Sampson. Nope. Nope. All right. Any other discussion on on garbage? We have a motion and a second not to outsour outsource garbage. Uh, and that means not charging your and not yeah not that, charging. that was already voted down. Right. So this okay, would be strictly not to outsource not garbage. To outsource garbage. We have a motion. Call the roll, please. Belt. Aye. I'm sorry. Just re we're not a, a yes, an I vote means that we will not outsource the garbage. That's correct. Correct. Okay. Belt, uh, belt it was I. Uh, Boren. I. Carlson. No. Decker is excused. Hammond. No. Hammond. No. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. No. Kittleson is aye. Matichek. Aye. Raisler. No. Sampson. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eyes and seven nose and one excused. <coughs> excused. So it's a tie. Motion fails. So it'll go to the council with no recommendation. That's on the garbage. What about the, the budget? We're still short money. <coughs> no. Alderman Versi's next Thank on you. that. Okay, let's let's add some numbers together. Okay, we talked about conservative and in a DPW. That's two hundred seventy thousand dollars. What nobody has brought up tonight again is the fire department. That's three hundred forty thousand dollars. The library, a hundred thousand dollars. PD, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Dispatch, three hundred eighty thousand dollars. That's one point two four. Okay, that's just those. Now throw garbage in there. It's two point eight four. That's, that's closing all of our gap this year, all of our gap next year, and we could potentially, say, a year or two down the road, decrease taxes in our city. How happy would people be when, look at that, your tax levy's going down, but we made up these differences. We've lived with the changes. They're not that bad. The sky is still up there. Nobody's burning in the streets. There's not pedophiles overrunning our streets. There's not gangs everywhere else. That's what it is. Those are hard numbers that we just talked about tonight, but we like to shoot these down and throw another one out, then shoot another one down. We can't keep doing the Band-Aids. These are hard numbers right in front of you. Without garbage, that's 1.24. With garbage, that's 2.84. Why are we sitting here bantering back and forth about a little bit of this, a little bit of that? These are hard decisions, yes, but these aren't hard <coughs> numbers to look at. This is simple math. Simple math. I don't understand what we keep doing. Even without the garbage, which was just voted down, going to council, that's 1.2. But there again, that's not going back to the fire department, which was counted out of that. That's $340,000. So DPW, fire department, library, PD, wherever that 150 came from, and then dispatch being 380, which we agreed on already. What is the issue? Why, why are we not meeting this 1.24? I don't, I don't, why can't we come in agreement on, yeah, it sucks. We can't raise taxes. What's funny is the people that are calling us now saying, well, I'll just raise my taxes. Well, when we can raise taxes, they're going to be calling us saying, don't raise my taxes. It's, it's no different than what we're doing right here. This is raising your taxes. All those people that call us and says, raise my taxes just to fund my services, well, okay, that's what we're doing. Well, this is why we have to trim. Like anybody who has, lives with a budget, which I hope, well, 90% of the people out there have to live within a normal budget. If you, if you have less money coming in, you're going to cut some of your services that you provide to yourself. You might cut your cell phone bill, you might your cable <coughs> bill, whatever. That's what we're doing. Not that I'm comparing our police department and fire department to cable and telephone, but these are hard numbers we're looking at. Why do we keep throwing suggestions out? And Alder Collison and Jim, I have brought up. I'm the only one who brings up the fire department for some reason. I'm the bad guy. But everyone wants to shoot it down, but there's savings. Police department, there's savings. I'd, I don't know why we keep looking at these same numbers every time we meet, but we don't make any decisions. Nobody wants to vote on the library. Nobody wants to vote on the fire department. Nobody wants to vote on anything here. Those are numbers. And these aren't even cutting major services without garbage in there. That's $1.2 million. And what are we facing for next year? 
1.6 worst case scenario. Okay, now throw your garbage in there. You have 2.8. Now everything through 2013 is now covered. Am I wrong on my simple math here? I've got it. Alderman Carlson. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm just going to call you chief because it's easier. Um, the $270,000 saving for DPW is already factored into your $1,035,000, correct? Correct. So you got to take that two seventy out of there just because that is a big number. And then second, just because I've heard it twice tonight, we already have a recommendation to the council on Monday for privatizing garbage. So that's not dead in theory. So it's still there. So that's one option we still sort of agreed on last week. We just happened to vote on it again tonight for some reason. We voted to not. <laughs> Night. <laughs> that was the Alderman motion. Sampson, did you have? Uh, no, I was actually going to just, just follow up with the Alderman Verse. I think we need, we got to make those hard <coughs> decisions, and we need to open up the uh, discussion again about the fire department. Um, and, and, and those, I'm not, we're not going to dictate which station I think he's going to close or if that's going to be one of the options, but I really, I think we have to go back to these, these issues that have, uh, have big, bigger or larger savings to them. And we have to we have to reconsider everything that we have to. We're we're still looking at uh, just uh, barely covering, not even covering so far this year, based on what we really agreed to. Alderman Carlson, do you have something? I guess I'd, I'd make a motion that we cut the library funding by one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Second. We have a motion and a second to cut the library fund by one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Any discussion, Alderman Carlson? And um, it, I guess and, and we're accused of micromanaging all the time, so I, I guess at this point that um, it would be up to the library board to decide if they're going to literally cut services or if they're going to take cuts in pay or what have you. It, this is one time that we can say we're going to do a blanket cut and let them decide what type of services are important to their department. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion on the library? Uh, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Chairman. I know we went through this in Finance Committee at, at length, um, and I certainly had some pointed questions there. Um, as we are doing in, in, in pretty much every city department, we are doing some restructuring. We are doing some trying to find ways to make things more efficient. I think this is one way that the library can, can do some as well, um, whether it's through restructuring of, of their management at, or of their new materials. Um, like I said, I know we went through this at Finance Department. Their new materials budget is approximately $410,000 a year. Of that, approximately $60,000 a year are spent on movies, DVDs, and entertainment CDs. Um, I, I think there, are, there is room, in, in fact, Director Winkle has indicated there is room to, to make possible cuts, and, and I would hope that they, they do the best they can with, with what the city gives them to, to keep the hours and the operating um, hours open the way they do. However, again, all departments are looking at restructuring and trying to find ways to make things more efficient. I, I think it's appropriate that the library do the same. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, would you be uh, prepared to share a few thoughts with us on if there was a $150,000 cut? Uh, is there any, do you have any options without uh, cutting your hours, for example, if you could just give us maybe some scenarios before we vote on this? Well, again, even though... Um, Alderman Hammond telegraphed uh, a possible cut at uh, the last meeting where he spoke. Um, I don't have any um, hard figures with me tonight. Um, I think that when you get into the magnitude of $150,000, we probably will be looking at service reductions. Um, you, as said earlier, we're kind of running out, like every other department is, you know. Um, do you want to cut materials by $150,000? If it were a short-term situation, you might be able to do that for a year and, and not too badly damage your ability to continue to serve the public in the future. But I don't think we're talking about a short-term situation. Um, do you uh, regularly want to reduce your materials expenditures by this amount? No, I don't think so. So we would need to look at a balance, in my opinion, and again, it's the library board that's going to decide this. In my opinion, um, as I discussed with the finance committee of the library board very recently, I think we would look at a balance, um, we meaning staff, making the recommendation to the board, a balance of reducing uh, funding for materials and then reducing staff, which reduces services. 
I can tell you that the requests for services are going up um, and that requires staff. But again, the city has to live within its means. So we may not be able to protect that, if you will, and respond to the increase um, in services. So just a, from 2008 to 2011, uh, there's a 4% circulation increase. This is looking at mid-year figures for each of those years. And then from 2008 to 2011, there's a 21% increase in services. And that pretty much goes back to the staff. So um, is it going to be devastating uh, to the people in the community for those who can change when they come to the library? No. And we know from past times when we've needed to cut hours of service, people have been able to come to the library at, at different times. Um, if there are people who, um, whose schedules don't allow them to make a modification, then you know, they'll be shut off at the margins and they won't be able to continue to use library services in person. Uh, Sharon, I think somebody mentioned earlier tonight that you're being funded at about, was it 7% less than maintenance of effort if we were to fund you by to maintenance of effort, what is, what is that dollar amount? If we were funding you to maintenance of effort like we have in the past, how much more would you be getting for 12? I will need to get a, another sheet of paper. Huh? I, I, I'll need to get that from my satchel. Okay. All uh, right. If you have a minute, I can check. Okay. Alderman Carlson, did you want to make a comment while Sharon's getting in? I've got a few in? more questions, too. I mean, all right, she's good. up there. The first good. question is, I, I'm guessing, just like any other good department head, you have all your services prioritized by most important to the least important. So I would assume you're going to cut the least important services. So if that's not ours, you would cut, I don't know, having the newest edition of the Transformers movie. I'd run the risk of micromanaging, but I don't see that as an important library service. Do you? When I look at a library, I think of a place to go and learn, to do research, to study, to use the Internet for those purposes, and, yes, to find jobs. So that's me micromanaging, but I, I'm assuming you have a list, correct? What was the first part of your question when you, you gave examples? You have examples? a list of the most important service you need to have, that which may include expanded hours, and the bottom, bottom tier. So in theory, you would cut the, the least important before you would cut hours, I'm, I'm ask, get, guessing. Um, we do have a mission, and we do have roles that we serve in the community, and we do have initiatives for any given year. In terms of what's the least important service to the most important service, I will give you an example. When we look at hours of service, we know what the pattern of use is for people coming into the library, and we base that on checkout use. So within uh, the question of what services would you reduce, we know that Friday is the least used day on an hour-by-hour -hour basis, which is one reason why in the past when there were funding cuts, Friday service was eliminated. Um, so we, we actually kind of look at each of the services and trim each service based on observed use or predicted use. Do we actually say that uh, it's more important for somebody to be able to come in to use the Internet to look for a job than it is for someone to come in and do a report for school. Uh, we don't do that so much. We try to serve all of our audiences, uh, whether it's by purpose or whether it's by age range. Is it more important for a senior to have large print books than it is for uh, a young child to have a video that helps them learn shapes and colors and alphabet. Uh, that, that's a difficult decision to make. Again, we would try to serve each one of those audiences to the best of our ability, probably pulling a, back a little bit in each one of those. That's, that's our approach at this time. Follow up? I guess I'm going back to what you said. If this was a short term, I guess just for the next year, wouldn't that allow you to re-examine your services for the next year's budget to better plan? If it were a short term, I don't see any indication that it is. But we don't know. I'm I'm just just asking a question. If you can mm -hmm. if you can survive on one hundred fifty thousand dollars less, 
that gives you a whole year to, to plan for next, next year's budget, correct? Nationally, every year we evaluate uh, the resources that we need and the way in which we need to staff the library, uh, renew the collection, offer internet services, offer programs. I'm not quite sure. I, I guess the, the thing I'm trying to get at without actually saying it, but I'm going to come out and say it, I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. salaries. That's one thing you've never discussed here, and, and the salaries, that, that's, that's a big chunk. I think it's $1.5 million out of the library. It's more than that. Okay. So um, well, we have addressed you. salaries. Uh, we have our staff on furlough, which is a 1.9% reduction, and we've had that in place since 2009. But I, I guess I'm more so talking about pay cuts. Pay cuts. Across the board. Um, I'm not aware that other departments are engaging in pay cuts at this time. Um, if I understand that there's going to be a salary survey done next year, at the beginning of 2012, Naturally, the library board will look at that. Uh, we've always, at the library, based the, um, we've had a benchmark system where there were certain library positions that were benchmarked to Schedule A, which is the salary schedule uh, in effect currently for um, city hall employees uh, who are currently represented by Ask Me Local 1564. And so by keeping that benchmarking, uh, the library salary schedule moved as did Schedule A so that uh, we didn't survey comparable libraries. Comparable libraries are municipal libraries. And again, this linking took care of that situation uh, in the method we had for assigning values to various positions or types of work. So I'm not aware that a pay cut is in order simply because the people work at the library. Uh, we, ha we don't have a general salary increase in 2011, as was the case for comparable city employees. So we've already addressed that somewhat, uh, even though it was a double bump pay increase for Schedule A employees. Uh, it would be a 3% increase for them heading into 2012 and the library staff did not receive that increase. So I don't know to say that we're not addressing salaries. Uh, I don't think it's a fair representation of the actual situation. Uh, Sharon, do you have the answer to that question I asked um, a few yes, minutes ago? The, well, I, I think this is what you were asking for. The um, 2012 funding is 7.8% below what the maintenance of effort level of funding would have been for 2012. And that's a difference of $203,464. And what did you do to address that reduction in what we would have given you for maintenance of effort? What adjustments did you have to make in staffing or services? Uh, One thing we did at the beginning of uh, 2011, which was alluded to in some of the comments, is that we did restructure the way we provide reference service, which is an important part of adult services at the library. So there has been restructuring that we've done. We reduced the uh, reference staff complement uh, by two full-time equivalent positions. Uh, and reference services are not now available at all times the library is open. There's no reference librarian available to address reference questions on Monday through Friday from 9 until 11 a.m. And we have been relying on use of an online or virtual reference service during that time as a backup that was being funded by the state of Wisconsin. Um, that service is no longer going to be funded starting in 2012. Um, there are a group, there's a group of libraries looking at how we can continue that, uh, but then the libraries involved will need to pay some fees in order to continue that backup virtual reference. So then, in, in, essence, in essence, then, for 2012, because we're not face funding you at maintenance of effort, you're being cut $203,000 already, plus your staff stepped up to the plate with another $100,000 for the Walker bill, so in essence... You're in, you've had a reduction of $303,000 for 2012, if I understand those numbers if, correctly. If you factor in maintenance of effort funding, which that requirement is no longer in I know, place. I know it's no okay. longer, I know it's no longer there, okay. but you're not getting the money. 
That's correct, and we have made adjustments, as, as I've described. So there has been a restructuring within the library, and we did reduce staffing. We reduced um, reference librarian staffing. Any other questions for Sharon? Thank you, Sharon. I think we have a motion. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Alderman Koth. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Um, of the um, phone calls I've received and the emails, I've had a f well, actually mo most of the calls were in reference to uh, they'd rather pay more for garbage than you know cut the library. So I I'm going to suggest something before we vote on this library. As far as uh, we're 1.18 million short, and we have 1.6 million already for garbage. <clears throat> so if we took the 1.18 out of the 1.6 million to, co to cover the 600,000 and, and everything else, we would still be able to leave the library alone, uh, not take 150,000 from the police, um, <coughs> and not, not close a fire station. Uh, we could actually subsidize that money that we took out of the garbage. We could subsidize by charging five dollars a month on a water bill. See what I'm saying? No. And we can call it. I have no idea what you just home. said. Run, run that, run <laughs> that <laughs> bias again, please. Maybe it's just getting late. But can you uh, maybe go sure, through that math again? I, okay. We've got 1.6 million dollars for garbage. We keep the garbage. We've got 1.6 million. Okay. We are short. And this is something that um, 1, 1.18, we're short, correct? Or not? 1.035. You're not talking about the general fund? Addition. Well, the six, right. Plus the 600,000. The 600,000 to go in the general fund. Oh, what are we short? 1. 1. Just for next year, 1,035,000. Oh. Between this right. year and next year? 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is 1.03. But uh, well, whatever we need, if we took that out of the 1.6 million for garbage, we took that out, and then we would subsidize the garbage back in on a water bill. So you're talking about outsourcing garbage? Uh -uh. No. no. She's Keep basically talking about fee. using having a fee again, so three or five dollars to. <coughs> to cover. She's the saying cost. basically the fee would cover. The budget gap. Mm -hmm. Correct. Instead, of, instead of saying, hey, "Hey, let's just take five dollars from, from you know off the water bill and pay for the, you know what we're short, why not just shift it around a different way and, and charge it towards the, the garbage?" Because most of the calls I've gotten again were, "I'd rather pay more for garbage and keep the library." Just a roundabout way of doing it. Thank you. Alderman, Alderman Van Akron? I, I would agree, but that, as, as we talked about, that is kind of what we just went through a little, a little while ago, and it was voted down. Um, you know, we, we seem to be kind of going in circles. I think the 150000 cut to the library um, is reasonable, considering that we are looking at all of the options. I, I myself do have a priority list of what services city provides, and I don't want to see cuts to public safety sectors and closing fire departments and, and putting people's lives at risk or, or jeopardizing their safety. Um, on my priority list, this is one area where I think that, that a cut can come from. Is this going to solve all of our problems? Absolutely not. There's still, it, where, however this vote goes, we're still going to have some other things that have to be done. Um, you know, going, going back to, to the fee that she just mentioned, that fee alone would, you know, bring approximately a, a million dollars to our situation and, and would solve our problem. Is it 1.6? No, it's a million. It's a little bit short of that. It would get us to, to where we need to be. But as far as the library goes, again, we're looking at cuts in every area, um, and these are the tough decisions we were all sent here to make. I, I think it's time we start making them. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you. You know, I think we need to you know, kind of look at the basics of financial statements. We can either increase revenue or decrease expenses, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, there's no, that's the answer. Um, and if we're, un, again, unwilling to look at any cuts, but unwilling to look at any increases to revenue, this is not, the math isn't going to work out ever. 
when it comes to comes to this. Um, now, again, as I mentioned earlier, these are extremely difficult cuts to make. Um, some of it is we're paying for the sins of our forefathers, fully admitted. Um, but again, either increase revenue or decrease expenses. It's only two ways to get here. Any further discussion on the library? We have a motion and a second to uh, cut the library funding by $150,000. Call the roll, please. Belt? Aye. Foran? No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Hammon? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? No. Nope. Kath? No. Kittleson says no. Matichek? No. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Six yes, seven no's, motion fails. Motion fails. Uh, Alderman Versi, did you want to continue with some recommendations you have on your list? Oh, you, want to take it up? you want to take it up on Monday? Oh, no, we got hours yet. I'm not even home yet. No. Bring it back. Actually, I'll go about what Alderman Carlson had said to the beginning of his recommendation for the library, and I'll do it with the fire department. We always are asked for direction, and when we give direction, it's micromanaging. So actually, as council, what we're supposed to be doing is just some of the talk tonight is, here's your budget, you make it work. It's not mm -hmm. us doing it. It's not us doing the closing of the station or laying off employees or doing whatever. You have to work in that budget. This is your budget. That's what we're supposed to be talking about. And as far as budget's cuts go, there's, and he actually has a few of those suggestions up there, back to the 340. So I guess my recommendation is to go back to the recommendation, one of the scenarios that the chief gave us, which was him closing that gap of the 340, but I'll just put it out as a general fund cut of $340,000 to the fire department. That's my motion. Second. General fund cut. I just want to make a correction on the value. The 340 would be a full year. It's 240 for salaries, but we only have three quarters of the year salary in, so it's actually 180 for salaries and probably 50 grand for heat, light, and utility. So it's 220, not 340. 220, 230. Okay. So, okay. Part of uh, Jim, part of that, you're saying that uh, the scenario with the 340 was closing a station, right, for about 70, and the rest was wages. Is that what you're saying? Well, what we said was, is it'd be the impact of three people plus the station closing costs for one year but the way we've budgeted the people uh, in order to save money the people that retired we're not bringing them on till April 1st so we really don't have 25 percent of the savings we thought we would have because of the way we budgeted that's all well I guess if I, could, if I could just add to that then you don't bring back all six that are going to be retiring I mean that's a simple you don't have the money to hire you don't hire you hire you bring back and you're not laying anybody off because you have the retirements. Same thing in DPW. You're not laying anybody off. You have the retirements. Same situation here. But my motion is, I'll, I'll, I'll correct it to the 230. Just say you have $230,000 less to spend for 2011. So there's, there's my motion. It's 230, not 340. All right. Let me, let me is that, that still a second? Um, if, if I could just clarify, the, the 230... Is, is still not bringing back the full six that retire? Or how many retire? Four, six? Six. six. So, the, so the 230 is including all six or? No, three. Close the station, three, three people. Is 230. Yes. Okay. Then I'll say, I'll say. Uh, Alderman Heideman, I think you were first. I'll get to you, Alderman Thank Van you. Akron. No, that was for something that else. That was for something right. else. Alderman Van Akron? Okay. Um, I guess we'll go over this again. Uh, I, I want to say it's probably the third or fourth time in the last couple of weeks that we've had this same vote. I, I will give you credit for being someone that is bringing up the ideas, um, but I, I certainly can't support, again, increased response times, increasing public safety risk for the financial situation we're in. I, I can't support having people, whichever uh, fire station would end up closing, 
having people, again, their safety being put at risk so that we can solve our money problems. That is the facts. It will happen. That's, we've gone over this time and time again, and it gets voted down time and time again. Um, but, but again, I do give Alderman Versi credit for being active in, in, in throwing out some ideas as to how we're going to solve this problem. Um, from my count, it's, it's myself, Alderman Hammond, Alderman Versi, Alderman Carlson, and Alderman Racer that are the only ones that have posed ideas as how we're going to solve this problem. I'm running out of ideas. If, if someone has them, that I, and if I'm not giving someone credit for throwing out these ideas to solve this problem, you know, forgive me, maybe I forgot, but we are getting nowhere, and, it, and it, it just appears that that's how it's going to stay. I'd like to hear the ideas as to how we're going to solve this issue. Uh, Chief, could you step forward, please? I got a question for you, but I'm going to call on Alderman Versi first. Thank you. Let's just go back. We have to look at financial. Not everyone, every time we talk about a service, we have to pull it at the emotional side of everything. This isn't the emotional side of things. These are facts. These are financial facts. And tying emotional things into everything isn't the way you're going to get anything done. And in that fact, we might as well hire 500 people, and then, then the emotional side's all taken out of it. So, I mean, that's what you have to look at is take the emotional side out of things, think rationally, think strategically with your money. I mean, that's, is it, if you don't run your, I'm sure you don't run your house on the emotional side of things. I know I don't, even with five kids. You, <laughs> it's financial. So, I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Uh, Alderman Belt, you can go ahead and I'll ask my question. Uh, I want to ask uh, Jim Amodio a question, so. All right, well, let me ask the chief the question first, then I'll call Jim back up. Thanks, Alderman Belt. Uh, chief, <coughs> If we uh, said that we were going to cut $230,000 from your budget, what would you have to do? I mean, are, are there some, are there some perif peripheral services that you provide other than, you know, going on calls that you could make some cuts in? Is there any, is there any possibility there? Or, again, what would you do with the $230,000 cut? Well, those peripheral services really are ones that we do that I can't put a price tag on because we're there anyway. Um, it doesn't really cost us a lot of money to go out into the schools to put on our fire prevention programs. Um, our building inspections, something that we have to do, but I really can't put a, a cost onto how much that costs for us to go out there and do that because we're here already um, anyway. Um, if we're looking at cutting three employees, um, that's that's closing a station. Um, we're at the bare minimum now, running two people at station five. Um, and again, I think, you know, I, we talked about the circle map that I've shown you all. Um, those circles are evenly spaced in this city around the stations because there was a lot of time spent deciding where do we put the fire stations in this city. So if we're going to close one, that's going to cause ripple effects. And I already heard Ms. Johnson tonight say, well, let's not close the downtown one, let's close the one on the far south side. Well, if we do that, um, we saw what happened last year, the public outcry. Um, we have no firefighters on the other side of the railroad tracks. I live right on those tracks. That train comes by all the time. And really, the real concern for me in closing a south side station is when that other station is out on a call, there's nobody else on the south side of the city of Sheboygan. So that's really the main concern for me. And again, if we close the downtown station, we've got that hole in the center of the city where we do have the main, the most of our calls. And the downtown station and the station three station on 25th Street, those are our two busiest stations. So if you close one of those, that causes a ripple effect of now we can't cover all the calls in the center of the city from those stations, so we're pulling in from the other stations to cover those calls, which leaves those areas empty. So as I said, there's ripple effects to closing a station, so I think you can't just make that decision in, in a one-night conversation. That needs to have as much thought as when you decided to build a station to make that decision. Uh, Chief, I heard a discussion, and I don't know if it's a discussion I had with you or, or somebody else, that with the, with the downtown station here, with the weight of the trucks and the equipment and the age of that station, that there may be some foundational concerns as you go forward with that station. Is that true? Um, we did have some concerns when we bought the rescue pumper. That was one of our heavier vehicles. We did have Miller Engineering come in and do 
uh, an engineering study for us because the last thing we wanted to do was back the truck in there and have it fall in the basement. Um, that is the only fire station in the city that has a basement underneath the apparatus floor. All the rest of them are on grade. So um, it's the oldest station in the city. Obviously, it's going to have some issues as we move forward. Okay, thanks. Alderman Van Akron, did you have a question for the chief? I'm good, thank you. All right. Anything else for the chief? Thanks, chief. Uh, Jim, if you want to come back up, I believe uh, Alderman Belt has a question for you. Overall, with our, the city budget we have, what is the percentage that we're short right now? About uh, 3%. About 3%. You got a million dollars over two years on 35 million. So if we go back to the Mead Library, the police department, the fire department, public works and transit, and tell them all to cut their budget by, say, $100,000, $200,000 a piece, that would cover our shortfall? Sure, as long as it, as long as it equaled a million dollars, but then you wouldn't really know what services wouldn't be provided because this is just taking a backdoor approach but, to saying... But then we're, then we're not micromanaging either. We're telling them, you've got to go yeah. back and we need money from you. I don't care how you do it, but this is how much you've got to come up with. But then once we do that, then we can't, by the same token, listen to constituents complain about the lack of service that was cut. That's correct. It can't, go, it can't be both ways. Right. I mean, that's just a suggestion out there to get this moving here. Nobody wants to raise a fee. Nobody wants to put a fee on, so that means we got to cut. And if cutting every department by $200,000, if that's across the board, that's, that's everybody. That takes all the, well, I'm not going to say it's going to take all the emotion out of everybody because I know the... Some of the guys are going to have a concern about the fire department, police department cutting their budget, but I mean, we got to move on here. I got to go to work in a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get any sleep tonight. As it is. <coughs> I got to be at work at four, so um, we got to move this along. Uh, I'm going to call on. Thanks, Alderman Belt. Alderman Heideman. Yeah. Uh, one second. I got the uh, uh, question for uh, the administrative chief. 80, you'd have to say 85% of our budget is wages and benefits for our employees. It's about 78 to 80% this year. 80%, okay. So I don't know how we're going to get around cutting anything in the city if it doesn't equate to personnel, wages, benefits. And they've done a, some of the departments have done a great job as far as uh, compromising, giving us uh, uh, money back and stuff like that through negotiations, and I, and I appreciate all those efforts, but obviously... It didn't meet the target that we needed to get to keep this city where it needs to be. Uh, I guess for any lack of a suggestion of my own, I would support some, Alderman Belt's um, uh, motion to go across the board, not micromanage, n not say we're going to determine which uh, service you have, but put that on the, uh, on the department heads and the people that actually work in the city as opposed to having Joe Heidemann decide whether or not I close a fire station or whether I give up garbage, uh, uh, garbage or whatever it is. So I think I'd like to see it as we did with the star resolution in the past, across the, percentage, across the board percentage on the city departments so that we can at least get something started this way. Uh, thank you, Alderman Heidemann. Uh, Alderman Bell, did you want to make a motion to that effect? Oh, we've got a motion. Already a motion. Well, we've already got floor. now the motion on the floor now is for the uh, is General, for the is for the two hundred and forty thousand general fund cut to the fire department two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Versi and who second? Who made a second to that? Two hundred and thirty eight thousand. Two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and thirty. Is there Am any I more? Correct. Dis is that it? Two thirty. Uh, any other discussion on that? No further discussion. Call the roll. Belt. Aye. Oren. Aye. Carlson. No. Decker. Decker is excused. Hammond. No. 
Hammond. No. Heidemann. No. Kath. No. Kittleson says no. Matichek. No. Raisler. No. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. One, two, three, four, five, yes. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine no's. Motion fails. Motion fails. Uh, Alderman Belt, did you want, want to make a motion on your uh, proposal? I make a motion that uh, we go back to the Mead Library, Police Department, Fire Department, Public Works and Transit, tell them they need to cut their budgets by 5%. Second. Second. Five? Can we? Why not? What's that number? Oh, what's that number per? Oh, that, that's not gonna. That's <laughs> that's even across the board. If your budget is two million versus two hundred thousand, it's 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 five percent of whatever your total budget is. Uh, Mr. Amodio, uh, do we have a second? Oh, 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 yeah, I want to find out what that final. Yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> let's find out what that is. All right, <laughs> Jim, could you tell us if we uh, if we pass this? Uh, Alderman Belt's motion of an across-the-board huh? cut of 5% for the departments he mentioned, what that would uh, save us? I've got some things straightened out. Not off the top, Jim. Just, can I, I quick, just gap. real quick, just in the PD, that's $600,000 from the PD, that 5%. Yeah, just throwing a number at you. It's $600,000 from the PD, actually more. <laughs> okay. Then, then let's go across the board. That's five five departments, two hundred thousand dollars a piece that they have to find a cut out of the budget. PP and S, if you PP and S is about twenty one million dollar budget this year, so if you took five percent out of that it'd be a million oh fifty, we'd be there. <laughs> Say that again, Jim. PP and S budget is twenty one million dollars of the city's budget of thirty five. So in Freddie's example, if we took 5% out of those two departments, it would be a million dollars. But then you're going to have the police department, fire department. That's a lot of money coming out of those two. I mean, you've got to take a million dollars. We talked about this. It's 13 or 14 jobs. We've already got 37 people that retired, and we're trying not to replace all of those. We probably saved 10 or 12 uh, that we won't replace next year. Um, but the real issue is, if we leave it up to ourselves, there's not many nickels wind. and dimes mm -hmm. in departments. It's people. And if you don't have people, you don't have services. So we just have to be careful what we wish for here. Uh, Alderman Belt, originally you were talking about a 3% across the board for every department. Was that your original thought? Originally. It was originally five, but uh, if we go across the board and just say two hundred thousand dollars out of each budget, uh, those are, they're significant budgets, each one of them. So that gives us a million dollars. That's five different departments. I mean, everybody's going to have to bite the bullet here. Somebody's going to have to. I mean, either we're going to go after one department and just chew the snot out of it or we'll spread it across everybody, and everybody's going to have to bite the bullet. Uh, Mr. McDonald, I saw you raise your hand. Did you want to make a comment up here? Yes. Well, I, I guess before we start making statements about just cutting $200,000. Um, when I started here 10 years ago, we received $545,000 from the city of Sheboygan for our services. We're, our budget today right now is set at $511,000. We're, we're 30 some thousand dollars less than what we were 10 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. The budget that I've submitted is 20% cut what it was in 2011. So I'm already cut 20%, and that's gonna impact the federal and state dollars um, so to, to cut another $200,000, we're going to cut our services in half. You, you might as well close the door. But if you want to do that, then you've got to start paying back the federal government for the 80% that they own of everything we have. What department is that? Transit. Yeah. Any questions for Mr. McDonald? 
Thanks. Do you have something, Doug? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Alderman Belt, now originally, before you said 5%, you said 3% across the board. Every uh, I didn't every say three percent. Yeah, you, the first no. time I think the first time Jim, you, Jim said uh, Jim said three three oh, percent. Jim said three. Oh, okay. Is what we were short. He asked me what the percentage. <coughs> yeah, we can't really do anything with transit because of the uh, federal, funding. federal funding. Yeah, I guess again, as unless we want to close the doors. Well, then now we're down to four. Down to four departments. I need 250 from each. Huh? I said now you theoretically yeah, now, need now theoretically we're at 250,000 each. Uh, Alderman Sampson, you're next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> there's some departments that came in at budget or at what we requested, and then somebody was taken away, and there's some departments that came in above. So there's, a, there's increases in, in, I don't know, at least two of the departments that I, that I know of, the police and, and fire. Library came in at what was originally requested by Jim Amodio at the beginning of the year. And I, and I think some other departments may have done that too. I don't know exactly how everybody else came through, but there are departments that came in above uh, 2011's numbers. And that's based on just, just how some of the employment issues came out and things like that, but there are increases there. So if we can't touch transit, uh, really, uh, I, I thought the 150,000 for the library was a bit excessive. I have no issues, maybe some some cuts, but I think the 150 for the library was a bit excessive. But um, we're whittling this down. I, I don't know if there's if there can be some other percentage or some other dollar number that we can take from each of the departments that that we that we can, so that everybody is going to share in this. The uh, the fire department with the concessions that the uh, what the union made are budget neutral. Uh, we we got one agreement from the police department, their management union or whatever it's called, and the patrol. Uh, you know, the, the suggestion that Alderman Hammond made earlier was a hundred and fifty thousand dollar cut to the police department. But my understanding from what Mr. Omodio said that if they would have ratified the 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 patrol officers would have ratified their contract, that would have been two hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars. You know, in my mind. Uh, just about every department in the city has stepped up to the plate except for the uh, the patrol officers. And that was $230,000 that we were anticipating tonight, and they didn't ratify the contract. And I and if it goes to uh, mediation or arbitration, we're not going to know until January. But, uh, you know, I think in all fairness, as much as I hate to make a cut to the police department, those guys didn't step up to the plate. Everybody else did. So I, I'm going to make a motion that uh, because of the fact they did not step up to the plate, and hopefully this might get them back to the table, because I certainly don't want to lay anybody off in the police department, but I'm going to make a motion to uh, cut that budget for 2012 by $230,000. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if, if, if Alderman Belt actually made a motion with all of that or not or I don't think there was a second, there was no second. There was, there was no, no second. second. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. You want to go back? <laughs> I don't I don't think that's enough. Chairman. Since there's no second on this, I, I just want to backtrack a little bit. So on Monday we have on the agenda privatizing garbage service, 1.6 million dollars. We also voted tonight city dispatch we threw out a number 350. Let's go low. That's $300,000. 1.9, correct? Potential correct. savings next year. Alderman Versi here is talking about keeping motions out of it. We can certainly try to do that. The public's not going to. So the decision we have, privatized garbage, yeah, it's going to irritate everyone. It's going to irritate me. Like I said, I own two houses. I'm going to have to pay for two houses. That's going to go away. People are, it, it, the, the anger, the, the outrage, whatever, whatever word you want to put on it, it's going to go away after a while. City dispatch, that's going to irritate some people, yes. I, I get that. It might, might cause some problems, but they're going to have some time to try to sort it out and fix it. Once again, $1.9 million. We try to cut the library. The world's going to end. We cut police or fire. The world's going to end also. Those, 
sure, that'll go away after a while too, but the second there's two house fires and we, we, can't, we can't take care of that, it's gonna come right back in our face. The second we cut the police department, crime even goes up 0.1%, that's gonna come back in our face. Library, once again, the children will not be educated. My daughter uses a library, so it's not that I hate the library. We were just trying to make some smart decisions here in the long term. So I bring it back, city dispatch and garbage. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt at first, you just gotta rip the band-aid off. It's gonna go away, $1.9 million. And then going forward next year, we have a city administrator. He can work with the department heads to try to whittle down these budgets year after year. But sitting here trying to cut 3%, 5%, I think it's a little late in the game because no one expected this. Taking garbage out of DPW, that's gonna be easy. They're leaving. I mean, they're losing how many guys, director or manager, whatever? 20 people. 20 people. There will be no layoffs in that department. That's, one of, that's going to be the easiest fix. We will not lay off anyone. We could possibly even sell our trucks and get some more money out of this. City dispatch. Yes, we're going to have to keep some of the dispatch. I understand that, Alderman Racer. We're never going to be able to give it up fully, but that's still $300,000 that we could potentially save. I, to say that there's not going to be any savings, that's, I think that's a bit extreme. There will be savings. So we could even bump it down to $250,000 from the three hundred and fifty. So that's $1,850,000, and then we can work from there next year. But sit here, try, sitting here trying to take $100,000, $250,000 out of each department, that's going to get us nowhere. And like I said, it's too late in the game to expect the library to cut $150,000 out of their budget or $250,000 out of the police department. It's, that's too much to ask right now. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Uh, next, we have Alderman Van Akron. Uh, I will certainly agree with some of that and disagree with some of it as well. Um, as far as on the motion, just to clarify, your motion on the police department, was there a second or is that? There's no second. Yeah, okay. So going back to garbage, because again, that seems to be the focus of where we've been at for the last two weeks. Um, I think we do need to make a decision one way or another. And when you compare the quality of service for the cost, I think you have to look at, again, it costs us operating costs 1.6 compared to the private sector of 1.9. We can control the quality of service. We're not sure the quality of service we're getting that. We know that down the road, our, our costs aren't going to skyrocket and, and that three years from now, who knows where that, that private industry cost could be. I think it's about being responsible. If, if you attach a small fee, a, a small monthly fee, you can make up that difference. Alderman Raisler's proposal of $5 a month to control the cost of garbage is approximately a million dollars. Is it 1.6? No, but it's a million. What is our deficit hole? It's a million. And that's also then putting that money back in the reserve fund to make sure we're at, we're at the reserve fund level that we need. It solves our issue. Does it solve it long term? Absolutely not. But it certainly solves it for this year, and it's certainly something that's reasonable. Again, if we, if we privatize garbage and send it to a private entity, we are not only making people pay for their garbage service, but we are giving them the worst deal available, period. It is not cheaper than what we can do it for. It is the worst option we have financially-wise, but we're going to solve our budget problem by making them pay for it. That's, that's our solution. I don't think that's the right way to go. Thank you. Uh, next we have Alderman Belt. I just got a quick question for Alderman Carlson. You want to privatize the garbage, but you don't want to put a $5 fee in to keep it with the city. Is that correct? That's correct. But you want to put a $10 fee out there to privatize it. I want to get out of the business of garbage, yes. $10? You're, you're... Because the cost of garbage is not going to go down. It's going to keep going up. You are correct. We still will have that staff. We will still have the maintenance on and, those trucks. And the cost of garbage pickup on, on the private site is going to keep going up. <laughs> And we won't have any control over that. You're so, just making assumptions at this point, and once again, I go back to my original statement. $1,035,000 is our whole. We're nowhere anywhere close to meeting that. So let's be conservative here. Once again, $1,850,000. Not only would that meet our goal, we could also put some money back into the reserve fund and possibly have a surplus. A surplus is not a bad thing. I'll tell you, the city doesn't want us to have a surplus. They wanted the budget balanced. 
The city doesn't want us to cut police or fire or the library you are either. Correct. They, they also don't want us to cut the gar privatize the garbage. All the phone calls I've had in the last two weeks have been, you cannot privatize the garbage. I probably had 20 to 30 phone calls. Nobody wanted me to privatize the garbage. Thanks, Alderman Belt. Uh, let's see, who's next here? Uh, Alderman Carlson, you are next. Did you have anything else? I pretty much said it. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we have Alderman Koth. Thank you, Chairman. Um, what if we did both? What if we charged fee-for-service, again, garbage, um, even at $3 a, a water bill instead of the 5 or the 10 or the other numbers, uh, that would give us 630000 And then as far as the, the remainder, <coughs> took it out of uh, somewhere else. I mean, it sounds a lot less, 370000 and $3. Are you saying uh, keep the garbage with the city but then go to the fee? Well, I'm certainly in favor of privatization, but not at $1.9 million. And we don't even have that dollar amount. Um, so if it's going to be $1.9 million, then no, I'm not in favor of privatization. Then let's keep garbage. Alderman Hammond, you're next. I hadn't talked on the garbage thing at all yet because we were already sending it to council, so I didn't think we were going to have to have this discussion. Uh, I took in a lot of phone calls, too. And instead of actually just listening to what everybody else had to say, I talked it over with them and really wanted to see what their feels are. And the big concern that they have were the unknowns. Do we do the, the bin system? Do we use the tag system? Do we have to buy the bags? What are the questions that are there? This is why you bid the things out. This is why you find out what the other, the, those companies can provide us. We don't have those numbers in front of us right now yet. You lock them into a five-year contract, I'll take five years at, at $10 a month. I'll do that all day long. Five years from now, I'm sure the city is going to be charging more for garbage than we are right now, too. The contracts may go up. Who knows? Maybe they don't. We don't know that. We can plug that garbage. We can plug that hole now. There's, we've got a laundry list of things that we need to look at and start on in a, in a big hurry. We're looking at eliminating the city dispatch. We privatize the garbage. We finally get our undesignated general fund shortage fixed, which protects our bond rating. We cover the deficit for the entire year. We got it. And we've got a jump start on the mess that we're going to be dealing with in 2013. And to me, is it the quick fix Band-Aid? Okay, got me. It is. Slap the Band-Aid on it. We're, we got that problem fixed, and we stopped the bleeding for the time being. But it gets us on the road where we can, heaven forbid, somewhere along the way, maybe, just maybe, fix the tax levy. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Van Akron, you're next. Thank you. It I guess just to clarify, do we have a motion on the floor or a second no. on anything? Negative. I just started talking. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. I will then make a motion to, again, go over a fee establishment for $5 a month per household at the same math that we've gone over about five times now, um, which will generate approximately $1,050,000, which will cover our $1,030,000 hole all the way through 2012. We will have to figure out how to solve our reserve um, balance, but it will solve this year's problem and will solve our, our next year's problem. I think that's a way to go about this. Um, again, when you go back and look at garbage, in this instance, private industry cannot do it cheaper than what we do it. So to sit there and say, not only are we going to make people pay for their garbage, but we're going to give them the worst of the two options, I can't support that. Second. Who's second there? So what was the dollar amount? $5 Thanks. per month per household, approximately $1,050,000 to solve our $1,030,000 hole. Didn't we have that so motion that's, once that's already? So that's staying with yes. garbage, that's staying with garbage in-house, yep. DPW, $5 fee a month. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any, uh, we have a motion and a second. I thought I might have wore you guys down by now. I've got, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we have, uh, I've got some lights on here. Alderman Matterchek, did you want to talk about garbage? Uh, sure, actually. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, the majority of my uh, 
phone calls, it's the same thing as, as constituents, they do not want it privatized. I have heard a few that, that said that they would be willing to pay a fee. Others have said that they haven't. Um, but I think we, we, that is one thing that we have to buy the bullet is put the fee on there, but keep it in-house. Um, I've even been stopped in, at Target shopping by people that have said that they do not want the trash, and they think um, for voting uh, previously not to privatize the trash. Um, so I, I feel that we should definitely keep it in-house and put the fee on for the time being, even if, if maybe perhaps I have a sunset de date on it. Well, I guess I guess the only problem I have with it before I get to Alderman Versi is that I guess if we're at seven something now plus five, that's over twelve bucks a month. Then it's going to cost it's going to it's going to cost more for the city. Assuming we get some bids from uh, one of the uh, people that are bidding on it for uh, for nine bucks a month. If I may, oh, you got to go back. To it's not because the we're tax not level works. Seven, we're not giving them seven fifty back. It's okay. going to cost them seventeen fifty rather than twelve. Okay. I'm trying to give them the yep. best deal possible. Okay. I'm I, I don't want this, but this is where we're at. Okay. So. Privatizing would cost theoretically seventeen fifty. That's right. This fee would cost twelve fifty. You're right. Forgot about that. Thank you. Good point. Alderman Versi, you're next. Well, we can go to vote. I, All right. I got. I got Alderman. Let's see. I got <coughs> Alderman Hammon again. Okay. I, to Alderman Van Akron, I hear what you're saying about the best deal possible. The one thing I am hearing over and over and over again every time when it comes to if we got to privatize this, just put it on my taxes. We can't do it. We can't. Nobody's complaining about paying the money. They just want to be able to write it off on their taxes. We cannot do it. There's not a single person that I've talked to who says they're not willing to pay the fee. They just want it on their tax bill. We can't do it. You're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to find a solution to the whole thing that isn't going to fix the problem. You're, you're, you're making the, the numbers sound oh my God, end of the world, awe-inspiring, and it's not that bad. It, every one of them, every one of them that I've talked to has all said the same thing. They're not opposed to the fee. They're, opposed, they're not opposed to paying for it. They're opposed to having the separate fee because they can't have it on their taxes. It's the same thing. So we're going to throw out another fee in there, which becomes a quick Band-Aid fix, leaves us a big gaping hole that we're going to be staring at uh, another year from now, we can actually start moving this forward. We can start restructuring and getting these things going, and we can do it in one fell swoop with a recommendation that we've already sent to council. Can I, can I ask a question? Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Chairman. Can I ask, can't, why can we not have this on our tax bill, the fee? It's not possible? Can I ask Nancy? It's not deductible. It's not deductible. Oh, but it could, okay, that's the, it could go that's on the, the issue. Bill, it could go on the tax bill, but it's just not deductible. Right. Thank you. Call the question. I second that. I've Alderman Carlson had his light on before you. Thank you. I'm trying to understand this logic here. Right now it costs us 1.6. We're going to charge them another million. So in fact, garbage service is costing us 2.6 million dollars. We privatize garbage service. It no longer costs what if you want to put that one point. That 1.6 isn't paying for the privatized garbage service. We're simply using that to pay for the library, the police department, and the fire department. So it's not costing the taxpayer $17. We're paying for other services. So the, the logic there, I don't understand. But instead, we'd rather charge them $2.6 million for the same service. Call the question. Okay, uh, we, we've got a motion and a second. Yeah. Yep. Motion. Yeah. Well, the Chris question's been called, so. Uh, keep garbage in house and for a five dollar fee. Okay. Keep our garbage in in house five dollars a fee. Please call the roll. Belt. Aye. Oren. No. Carlson? No. Hammon? No. Hammond? No. Heideman? Nope. Koth? Aye. Kittleson says aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Bercy? 
Aye. Aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I vote for Alderman Decker? I know him pretty yeah. well. <laughs> seven, 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 motion again. fails. Alderman Riesler? All right, seeing as how we don't even have the bids in for the privatizing, I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn until Monday and hopefully try to resolve this on Monday. We'll have, the, we'll have the bids in then, and we'll have a little bit more guidance on what they're actually going to be. We got from 5.30 to midnight on Monday, next Monday, we can do it all again. I got a second. Mayor, did you want to make a quick comment? Yeah. One, one motion, one last motion. Okay, motion. David just some, some, some food for thought. Uh, you know, there's a lot of questions about if garbage is privatized and the type of service that would be offered. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the garbage providers that we've spoken to, uh, the idea is that they bid on the exact same garbage service that we are providing right now. In other words, the same clear bags, the same blue bags, the same routes, the same days of the week. Nothing changes in that bid. I know that there's a lot of uh, people that are talking about privatization that they're saying, I don't want things to change because change is a bad word. You know, everybody knows change is like a, like a four-letter word, even though at last, I think there's six. I said five once, but I think there's six letters in that word. Um, so, I mean, the idea was, you know, the idea is um, that it would be seamless as far as days of the week of pickup, blue bags, clear bags, being able to commingle recyclables, et cetera. Uh, that's just food for thought, um, that there would not, it would be a seamless change with the exception of, of course, there would be a fee. Thanks. You got a motion and a second. Oh, we made the motion. To we got a motion and a second to adjourn, was that? We made the motion. Riesler, you second? Belt. Belt. Okay, we are adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. I'm we are adjourned. Shifter. Thank okay you, everybody. This. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure.